So this is the final uh, sorting of all the perler beads. So I would say from um, last point, uh, I got all these sandwich bags. I got, I can show them all. They're like various assortments of them. So that way they're easier for me to uh, separate them. And as I do this, I want to make sure that I have a projected window. So that way the call can actually watch me. And uh, there we go. I also got a thing of food right here. It's a uh, Panda Express. How many? A sword in one side here. What? I was saying, can't say that I've ever had Panda Express. Oh, okay, fair enough. <laughs> What's up? So I'm laughing at Snick's comment. <laughs> Your food distracted him. <laughs> it looks like we're in the same boat, Blue. What's this? How many sort of men's? Looks like about three of them? Or four? I'll have a fourth bowl around here just in case. Just, just be careful not to chew and swallow those beads by accident. I'm not gonna chew. What? <laughs> I mean, don't you think it's a little dangerous to be eating while you're sorting those little beads? I mean... That's literally right next to your food. I should be fine. Everything will be fine. <laughs> Just cautious is all. <laughs> no in other news, I finally got a pitch right for a little something I'm doing. Mm. How much that? I. Well, let me save it real quick and I'll send it. Oh, wow. Alright, so. Let's see. This can go here. This is the darkest. This is the lightest, so I'll just move this to over here. Um, Are you doing like a, a light to dark? Yeah, sort of. You know what? Let's just stack this here for right now. That's what it seems to look like. Oh, this is an even lighter one. All right, well. The other bowl we need. <laughs> yep. <laughs> it's like, oh yeah, let's just do that just in case. Oh, wait, that's already there. <laughs> Darkest one will go over there. It's like barely even showing on the screen. I think I finally have an idea of what to do for art streams again, because I was kind of starting to get like you know, to the point where I'm like, I don't know what I'm going to do with art streams anymore. Because, like, they're, they're getting to the point where I was not really, like, getting anything done during them. But, um, I'm deciding I'm going to probably stream, like, myself making some more acrylic charm designs. Alright. Yeah, because I'm going to make a bunch of Hell of a Boss has been hotel charms. Hmm. And I am going to attempt, big word being attempt, to make an enamel pin. <laughs> All right. Mainly, mainly because I still have no clue how to make them. It's up in the air, like how I make them, because the website I use to make my my charms and everything is what I want to go through. And I I messaged the people who own that website, and I asked them like, like, do I need the Pantone book to be able to tell you guys like what colors to do? Hey, Domino. And... Hey, Wolfhead. Wolfhead. Welcome to the Golden Eats Things stream. But, um, Chat, having the fun. Yeah, we'll see how it goes with baking an enamel pin, because I don't know. 
Oh shit, I didn't update the Nightbot. Oh no. Yeah, it's like, oh yeah, give him a little bit of extra for his Babcon trip, even though that happened like a week ago. <laughs> well, a few days ago. Whoops. Also, how are you doing, Wolfhead? I am a <laughs> mad scientist. You are a mad scientist? I am cosplaying as a mad scientist. <laughs> I'm Rick from Rick and Morty. God, you're Rick from Rick and Morty. Yeah. You know what I've done, right? No. I set it up. I'd set up my Twitch so that anybody in chat can play my OBS gags in OBS while I'm streaming. Oh. Yeah. So now I gotta make more OBS gags, and I've already made, like, fucking 15 of them so far. <laughs> 15's not enough. I guess not. There. And I'm gonna make one... I'm gonna make one that features, like, all my friends. So now I have to make one of you, Shoka. So if I make oh. one of you, what... What would I have to make? And don't say smooching snick. No, why would I? No, I wasn't going to say that. I already I'm have. Sure. I already have. Shush. I already have plans to make another one of my friends smooch someone okay. in an OBS gag. Well, just try to think of what else like I, I can do in your gag because I don't know. I already have golden on a cloud. Oh, wait, is that the one where you did, um, like, what was Golden Dream and Evan, one of which was, like, I think it was Belly Dancing, that one? No, that was the, um, <laughs> poll I did, but I do have an OBS gag of you just sleeping and floating by. Hmm. Basically right. the same pre premise. On a big, fat cloud. <laughs> I keep thinking of more. Snugbat Def, I call him Snugbat. Chad, you are not allowed to call him Snug Bat. Only I should call him Snug That's fair. Uh, he came up with the idea that I walk into frame and I see him sleeping on my ceiling because he's a bat. And then I go out of frame and then I come back with a death metal album. And then he opens his eyes and tackles me. That's so cute. Yeah, yeah, I laugh on the one. I got a lot. I keep thinking of more. I mean... One I can think of because I'm an orca. It's just me popping my head out of the water. I could I could look up like water green screen or whatever. I could make it so that my whole screen fills up with water and then you just pop in and you're like hey. Oh my gosh. We should just like have like a speech bubble where it says that one emote that I have. <laughs> fuck them fuck them both. Or no, yes. it has it has one of the speech patterns from Animal Crossing. <laughs> Because they do a lot of Animal Crossing, last I remember. When was the last time you played Animal Crossing? Was, was it really the last time you caught a tire? Because if so, that was a yes. while ago. That, God, that was funny as shit. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that was the last time I played. Is when I caught the tire and you said you were going to get me that shirt. <laughs> yeah. I got to get you to fuck... Uh, I got, nope. I got to get you to fuck them both shirt. <laughs> Fuck a shirt. No, that is not what I said. I gotta get, um... I also have to get, um, Golden and Key a pair of hats that I'm sure they will never wear. But it will warm my heart that they will have them. Well, then, I will literally... If you get that shirt for me, I will wear it at BabsCon. And I promise. Okay, I gotta find... I gotta find the tweet. I think I bookmarked it. <laughs> Yeah, I will just get a whole bunch of orca themed shirts for Babscon next year. Just wear all of them that weekend. <laughs> Fuck them both. You can't wear it around <laughs> kids though, because then they're gonna be like, they're gonna be like, what do you mean? <laughs> what are you, what are you talking? Yeah, about? I would. Um, I'll wear it to bed. <laughs> okay, that's... you can wear it as a bed shirt. Yes, but then Snake's gonna be very concerned about. Yeah, the shirt you don't want to wear weekend. it while you're vending. Yeah. I have other shirts to wear for vending. I have this one that's like a cosmic themed orca on my shirt. Snick, are you in chat? If I make an OBS gag for like Twitch Redeem stuff, what do you want yours to be? The only thing I can think of is that you get hit by a nuke and nothing happens. <laughs> uh, I know he's like going to bed. 
Go ahead. I know he's going to bed soon, so he's just he's in chat lurking. That's what he told me. Ah. Like it's really like he gets hit by a Hiroshima bomb or something, and then he just stands there. He's like, who threw that piece of paper at me? Because he told me he works eight to five tomorrow. So. Oh God. Yeah, so I he's should... like, he's like, yeah, I'm not, I'm gonna be in the bed early. I'm like, okay. I should also be asleep, but here I am, uh, in Golden Stream. You're supporting the stream. I am supporting the stream. Watching this man eat all the food in the world. Isn't that right? I shouldn't be Golden. starving right Come now. Come to think of I it, really just ate. Come to think of it, this is like a Perler Beach sorting with a mukbang. Like a few streams ago, <laughs> I was the only one streaming. And it turned out to be pretty quiet, so it kind of turned into ASMR. <laughs> did you did you get all up in chat's ears and you're like, this is Golden Fox? Well, Golden no, it's Fox because I was the only one know. in the stream and it was pretty quiet. Oh, um, oh, that's what you mean. Okay. I thought you were literally trying to make it like an ASMR where the mic is like an inch away from your mouth and you just start whispering shit. It, like, oh you can find some very good ASMR content creators if you look in the right places and not just... Using a bunch of random mouse noises. Mouth noises, mm. sorry. Mouse noises? Shut up. <laughs> well, oh, by the way, Golden, I uploaded that that sound I was telling you about in the jukebox. The jukebox one saying? playlist. Was so that the, um, the, that Warner Brothers opening? Oh, no, this is, this is something else. It's only one second long, by the way. <laughs> Okay. Why did I think of the Animaniacs because of that? What is wrong with me? No, like, okay, so... On the contrary, Wolfhead, we actually had quite a conversation about how certain logo intros scared the shit out of us. When I was a kid, there was a certain VHS Warner Brothers logo that comes in, and it's so obnoxiously loud that it terrified me. It had, like, a 3D... Was it the THX? No. THX was, like, around in the 90s. Now, this is, like, late 80s. Okay, okay. Um, I know yeah, that... we all had those logos that scared the shit out of us out as children. For me, it was the Paramount Pictures feature presentation. Dun, 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 And now, our feature presentation. Dun, 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 Before the text zooms right at you, almost as if it's gonna grab you and drag you into the screen and say with a demonic voice... So, Enjoy hell, you piece of shit. <laughs> Who the hell? <laughs> that was a sound clip he made. Um, I was going to mention something. Somebody actually posted a uh, video that kind of took the cake when it came to what logo scared the shit out of us. And that is the old FHE logo from the 80s. Oh, was it the one that I shared with you? Or oh, wait, that was no. That was what Ninja shared with you. Yeah, no. It, um, it was a yellow screen and it's got this like writing... Uh, of the logo, and it's it's got so many synth sounds, like it's very 80s, but it's so unsettling and loud. Mm. <laughs> Though for me, it was always the CGI brush from the 90s. That one was a lot quieter. I don't know why it would scare you. Maybe because I was afraid it, something erratic would happen after the calmness. Oh, you thought something was going to jump scare you? Yeah, like that G major version that I shared with you. God, that... What is it with the term G major that makes it so scary? It's a fucking key term. It's a music key term. <laughs> Probably because it's pitched in that key that it makes it sound scary for some music. It has the trouble. G major is going to get you. The G major is going to be up under your bed tonight. In fact, why don't you play the FHE G major for the audience? Um, just to show them. Well, that's if I can get the. Um, that's if I can get the. Um, well, I don't know if I can present it on the stream because I now have it set to where it's like on different audio channels. Uh, but I can link. Well, them. if it's if it's if it's too much, then never mind. Link them in the chat if you can pull it up. Yeah, hang on. Um, F H E. Well, it is in the jukebox one playlist. In that is true. Server. Chat, since they're talking about logos that not logos, but like uh, intros that scared them, I'm gonna tell you about a a intro to. I don't know how many people know this. A lot of people have to know this because it's a popular game. Uh, 
I have a VR headset, obviously. I've talked about it. And <laughs> uh, I've played Half-Life Alex, but Half-Life Alex is a Valve game. And I don't know how many people have seen the Valve logo. It, it's been through a couple different iterations. I think at first the Valve was on the guy's eye. So that's oh. pretty unsettling to see. But in VR, when you start up Half-Life Alex, obviously the Valve is on the guy, the back of the guy's head, like, like the logo is right now. But like three seconds before the game starts, the guy, the guy starts to turn around. And right before you see his face, the game starts. God damn it. I always thought that was creepy as hell. I still think that's creepy as hell to this day. <laughs> what, what happened? Did, Did you, you drop you something? Like... My foot tipped over the trash can. Ouch. <laughs> also, Wolf, I sent you the link to that shirt because I found it again. Thank you. I need awesome. to bookmark it. Also, I found some other shirts that are pretty funny. I'm sending you the pictures of them because they're funny, and I'm going to get them. <laughs> See, Blue Griffin like knows what I'm talking about. Yeah, Tim and she and uh, the Rankin Bass. I just posted the FHE Logo 90s in the G Major. Oh, God. Prepare to have yourself shat while watching it. Prepare to have myself shat. <laughs> Shocked. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta make these gags, dude. I gotta make these gags. They're gonna. Hold it. What do you think of the other shirts I sent you? Wait, did you send me more? I sent you ones that I thought were funny, and I'm gonna get them. I like orcas and maybe three people. Orca. What the hell? I like <laughs> orcas and maybe like three people. Okay. Let's or organize. All right, I'm not getting you that one. No, you don't have to. I'm gonna get you that one myself. <laughs> also, Chad, I got another yourself. link. <laughs> that Always one used yourself. to scare the shit out of me. That Warner Brothers one. Wait, I gotta click on the links, but I gotta read this shirt. Always be yourself. Unless you can be an orca, then always be an orca. All right. Let me ask you something, Golden. Is the reason why that L Warner Brothers logo scared you was because of the abrupt silence that happens? Kind of. Yeah, it's just it was the abrupt silence, and then all of a sudden, boom! Da, 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 da. Like Jesus. <laughs> Sorry if I sound a little too loud on the mic. You're good. <laughs> well, I mean, like it just suddenly, it's it suddenly explodes into this bombastic fanfare, and then yeah. there's a deafening silence right afterwards. Yeah. Um. With the uh, Paramount logo, at least it fades in. Like. Yeah. See, Retro Gamer Kevin knows what I'm talking about. Help. It still doesn't help that it ends with a deafening silence right afterwards. I and mean, there's true. all this text that looks like it's yeah. ready to grab you and drag you into the television screen. In fact, <laughs> does anybody else feel like that would make for a good horror film? Oh gosh! You know what? Well, I ought to snatched up by a by a company logo. Honestly, I, I think this would be like this would be perfect for when October roams around, and I could just share those and see. Did this scare the shit out of you? <laughs> <laughs> we should make a video about that sometime. That'd be funny. I, I could do a dense stream of that. Yeah. There was like two different things that's, that were very loud when I was little. And like every time I would watch movies and they would pop up, they skipped the crap out of me. One of them was the, the Fox Century logo. Okay. Because it was so loud. And I was like, ah, no. And then the All second one was. um. You know, like back in like the old older Disney movie times when they had like the the THX logo, whatever it was, it was like the black screen, and it was very <laughs> loud. Yeah, the... yeah. Yeah, no, that yeah. was a unanimously hated uh, logo entry because it's so like it's so booming to the ears. Yeah, I think it was also because my ears are just sensitive to loud sounds, which is why I can't handle a lot of heavy metal. You know. Ironically enough, I never had an issue with the THX logo. It never scared me for some reason. Yeah, huh. but it is—it is very loud. Yeah. Unless you, unless I mean, you I don't. Down, obviously. 
I know it sounds utterly ridiculous being frightened of these things as a kid, but that's just how it was. I mean, I had other fears, to be sure, like with hand dryers, but nothing more than production logos for some odd reason. Did you say hand dryer? I know yeah, it's a little... I, mean, know, as I, I was always afraid of those things because I always... Well, I was always afraid that it would shoot out sparks of electricity and fire. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I guess. At the same time, though, when a, lo a lot of kids are very susceptible to sound. Um, and I remember from experience when I saw Independence Day in theaters. And when it came to the skyscrapers being blown up, holy shit. I was like, I was covering my, like, I was covering my ears and everything. Watching all the cars fall on each other and everything. That was... A very unpleasant experience as a kid. It should. I mean, that's supposed to scare you as a kid. But the thing about production logos is that they're not supposed to be scary. They're just <laughs> supposed to show you who made the movie. They're supposed to be, like, attention-catching, I suppose, in the broadest yeah. terms. Yeah, I, nothing, I guess you could say it's unintentionally, it's unintentionally nothing, scary. Nothing, nothing catches your attention more then looking at a screen and then having to go, duh, 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 it's like, holy shit, man. Yeah, exactly. Oh, yeah, here's the, uh, the para. Damn it. Oh, Magical Starflash says, I was scared of the washing machine. Yeah. Was it because it made a loud noise, too? No, I was terrified of vacuum cleaners. This seems to have a theme around loud noises. Yep, also, I, I meant to show that. This is what Juke was talking about when it says feature presentation, it just goes flying towards the audience. Like, oh, God. I'm watching it right now. No, this was... I saw this as a kid. This did not turn out. Is pleased to bring you okay, that, that part at the end when a letter is just like, fuck, get all up on your grill like that, yeah, that, that could be a little scary. Yeah. So, <laughs> like, I feel like the one that, it's not really scary, it's just very loud, is um, the Fear of the Walking Dead um, intro thing. Like, it, it's very loud and blasts in your ears when you're wearing headphones. How Unlike this video is just like, license only for non-commercial private <laughs> exhibition at home? Like, it's kind of funny, because the original Walking Dead show, like, that that ah, theme song isn't really loud. Fucking tweezers fell. Where are you? Oh, no. <gasps> yeah. But, yeah, if you, like, if you listen to Fear of the Walking Dead compared to the original show, it literally is so loud. And I'm like, why is it so loud compared to the other one? Trying to get your attention. Or at least turn the volume down. I do, then I turn it back up, because then I can't hear the people talking. It's like, uh... And the bad thing is, faith. like, the bad thing is, it's, like, it's only, like, the, the intro's only, like, maybe, like, 15 seconds long, and that's it. Thank you, Magical. Okay, this, this has nothing to do with what we're talking about. Does anyone know where, like, whether it's a website or a fucking picture program I can have where it could let me export a PNG without the background? <laughs> Uh, well, the program that I, job. I I mean, typically use Inkscape. Inkscape, huh? I was gonna say, like, why are you not? Why are you not saving images as PNG? Like, I the only program I have at my disposal is PowerDirector, and it it's a video making program. It's not like an image making program. Oh, uh, okay. So even if I throw PNGs up on here, it's going to export it as a video, and the background is going to be black. Oh, oh, I have to message someone. But Chad, how do you guys feel whenever, uh, when, come this Halloween, which I know that's going to be several months from now, <laughs> would you be down to watch a series of logo intros to see which one scared the shit out of which one? <laughs> I mean, I'm, great I mean, I'm fine with it. It would, be, it would be amazing to have a discussion. <laughs> you should make like, a just scary having logo everybody. Just having everybody in your call react to the scary logos, just to see who gets who gets terrified the most. Also, uh, Wolfhead, I don't know if there is a tier ranking for like logo intros that are based off of what scared the shit out of you. I'm gonna look well, that up. <laughs> well, you can make one on tierlist.com. I mean, but sure. I think you have to have some kind of special account or something. 
Should we send you submissions with video links? Um, yes and no. I think that would have to be sent in advance to avoid any copyright issues. Do they have to be old logos, or can they be logos from any time period? Well, what 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 means old to them? Because I grew up from the eighties and nineties. Some people grew up from the two thousands, if not two thousand tens. There actually is a tier list for production logos. I'll I'm gonna DM you this. Are you seat. fucking shitting me? <laughs> There's a tier Just list for speak everything. Yourself. <laughs> there is a tier list for everything, my friend. Okay. Um. Hmm. Let's see. We have Universal, Miramax, Warner Brothers, Walt Disney. I think these are general logo openings. Oh, they use the 20th Century Studios logo? No, 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 no. I still call it Fox. Disney can kiss my ass. <laughs> Golden, how do you feel about the um, Fox Searchlight logo um, beginning? I mean, that's been, camera that's been around since, like, the 2000s for, like, indie movies. I like it when the camera spins around and it's just like Fox from, from like a 3D perspective. Oh, that's the one I'm talking about. That was very loud. <laughs> da, okay, da, da, so da. <laughs> um, I did take a look at that. I think those are just general logo openings. I don't know if it like I don't know if I would make that a tier list or not. No, I don't think that would. I mean, you could rank the logos based on the the ones that we watch. I mean, true. That is true. But then he would have to like make the tier list from scratch, and also that's what. Okay, also, uh, Dice, um, I didn't know that you were just referring to uh, old VHS logos that are copyright issues. Um, I just make that as a general rule because a few times in the past I encountered some copyright issues whenever people linked me something while I was in the middle of streaming, and then it was like, oh, copyright claims, I gotta find a way around it. Like, I had to watch the video, I had to look into it and everything, and then I can commentate um, what I'm streaming. Mm. Yeah, I might as well. I might as well start making... No, it's about to be 11 o'clock, I gotta go to bed soon. I'll hang around for a few more minutes, but... I was about to say, I'm like, oh, okay, I'll well, have a good rush, but... No, nah, I wanna I wanna stay and talk with my friends. Why do I say friends like melee? <laughs> I should yeah. message melee. I haven't talked to her in like a month or something. I, I talked to her like last month. I should check in and see how she's doing. Yeah, because I talked to her about um our trip in June because we're gonna go visit her. Are you gonna go visit Melee? I need to see their new house. Yeah. I'm um, bashful. Uh, welcome aboard. Oh, son of a bitch. Oh, no. Did you drop one? This time. No, as soon as I was grabbing it, it's like... Pfft, it just started to, like, spread. I was trying to pick up two at once. Yeah, hey, Wolfhead. Well Damn it. What? What are your ideas about next year at BapsCon? I mean, that's not until next year, so my ideas are very few and far in between. Even if it's the last one? Yes. Because here's the thing. I was going to I was gonna say it in the Phoenix Nest chat, but I didn't because Golden and Bliss were having a conversation. When it comes to me in pony conventions, I don't go there for the pony convention. I go there to see <laughs> you guys. Yeah. That's fair. I've actually had thoughts of going to next year's BabsCon. Mm-hmm. Go if you can. It's going to be the last one. Hmm. Yeah. I know Snick and Toxic are planning on going with me, so... It would actually be my a... first time going to one of those conventions. You know who I'd I like to see in... I have convention since, since last uh, BronyCon. Go ahead, Gordon. No, I was going to say, you know what would be fun to meet in person? Hmm. Who? Who? Duct tape. <laughs> I I told him I'm like, hey duct tape. If you go to Bascon, just wear duct tape over your mouth the entire weekend. And he's like, then I won't be able to talk to you guys. I'm like, people yeah, are funny. people are gonna look at him funny. Like I, I guess that's the joke, but it would be yeah. nice to actually verbally interact with him instead of just going with the you know the yeah. literal gag. Unless of course he had a special sign that translated his thoughts on the paper. 
What's yeah, he great? should walk around with a sign that says, Don't be alarmed, I'm duct tape. Wouldn't his yeah. wrist be tired, though? What, <laughs> carrying a small picket sign? Probably not. <laughs> no, having to write all the time to communicate with people. He would have cue cards. He would just pull out cue cards. <laughs> cue ca I'm like, hungry. I'm except, thirsty. Of course, it's the either... problem with cue cards is that they're very limiting. Yeah, and then he would have to, like, play charades or something. <laughs> no, here's what you do. You get you write on the cue cards before you go to the convention, but you write very general responses on them. Shit like, I'm hungry, I'm thirsty, I like Starlight, uh, Rainbow Dash sucks, shit like that. <laughs> <laughs> That's so oddly specific. So you forget, there's America's Got Talent tape face, and he wore duct tape. I mean, well, he's also a mime. I think that's the whole, the gimmick yeah. behind why he is his that's mouth is taped. Behind him. Yeah, yeah, that was a mime. Duct tape is not a mime. No, he's the opposite of a mime. He's very loud. <laughs> I remember when he got which mad is ironic considering Omar, that his OC. Oh, you should have. Yeah, like, exactly. I, I think I think Juke was there during my stream of, of Golf with Friends. Every single time Duct Tape's mouse just died, <laughs> he's like he screaming. Has, he has the most oh, yes. catastrophic, I was there. like, he has the most <laughs> catastrophic, like, technical issues any streamer has had. Yeah. Oh, Not you should streamer, just content creator. <laughs> you should have seen him during my Clue stream, and where he was, he was yelling, he was, he was yelling at his keyboard. <laughs> Because his keyboard wasn't putting in the code for the room. Oh my god. His That's keyboard's gonna... broken, his, yeah. his boom arm is broken, he's broken. The mouse is broken. <laughs> the mouse is broken. Uh, but yeah, like the reason I asked is because I know Def said he wanted to go, but like he would only go if you go. Yeah, I talked to Def about that, and he was like, I might go to Babs. And I was like, all right, well, we have a whole year to plan, so, you know. Yep. Yeah. Still in the planning process. Cause um, I told I told Snick this, and he was like on board as long as I had someone to help me. But like, I'm gonna try to uh, do vendoring again. But um, my friend who made my plushie, um, she's offering to also help me with my table and actually sell things at the table as well, so I can actually get up from my table this time and actually go do things. Golden, I know you've been asked this before. Will you ask this on stream? I was gonna ask you how was your experience at Babscon because I knew you were I know you were vending for Chrissy a lot of the I time. still have yet to talk about it. There's a handful of things that I will say as a general as the general consensus, I had a lot of fun at Babscon. But mm -hmm. going far in depth with it because keep in mind, it's been about five years since I attended to any convention, not just the pony convention. Not to mention it's yeah. been nine years since I attended BabsCon, because I went to BabsCon back in 2015. Mm. Um, but I had some emotional conflicts back and forth. Like, I think the best way to describe it, and I would probably want to say this in a future video, is that I felt like Steve Buscemi wearing the school gear outfit. Uh, yeah, school gear outfit while holding a skateboard saying, How, how's it going? Because <laughs> that's how I felt. Like I felt like I was being too old for this stuff. <laughs> But people were still happy to see me. How do you do, fellow bronies? Golden's just standing. They keep talking to him about G5, and he's like, I have no idea what the fuck you're talking about. <laughs> I met a couple of people who enjoy G5. I met some people who, you know, still reference, you know, the old, like, the, uh, the older era when, like, the yeah. show was still fresh. Like, uh, okay, so the night before uh, BabsCon started... Um, there was actually a TV screen in the lobby at the, uh, uh, sir, uh, at the service counter and the, um, why did I have trapped frames? But, uh, but they're actually showing like the first two season episodes and people are quoting things, especially, uh, L when Luna approaches in, um, the Halloween episode. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. She keeps talking in the Canterlot voice. Yeah. <laughs> and people just reference it. Well, they just like, yeah. ha ha! The fun has been double. Or when we t uh, yeah. when we were watching um, Lesson Zero, where Twilight didn't have a new friendship lesson to write. <laughs> yeah. I still I still remember when Twilight was talking to the CMC and she was like, Hello, "Hi, girls!" girls. <laughs> and she looks like a freaking psychopath. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that was that turned out great. 
I still love that episode, despite how some people feel, because there are those who really hated the episode because of the atmosphere. It's, yeah. It's a silly little episode that's meant to be silly. I think it's an episode like, that did a huge, huge change for the show, because it was always Twilight who always had to write a friendship lesson, but now it's everybody else who's getting some development, and I th that was for the better. Yeah. I think... I think uh, Lesson Zero and the one where, um, what was the episode where Pinkie Pie had a twitchy tail? Oh, oh um, Feeling Pinky Keen. Yeah, yeah that Feeling one. Feeling Pinky Keen. Those are the two episodes from early in the season that feel like, that make you feel like you're watching Looney Tunes with how well, fucking well, silly everything gets. The Feeling Pinky Keen definitely feels very Looney Tune inspired. I mean, but what about like uh, Party of One? Which one was that? Oh, that, that was the one where he, he lost her mind. Yeah. That was the episode where everybody was like, okay, there's something wrong with Pinky, and we're going to write millions of fan fictions about it. <laughs> Including one that became the most notorious. Cupcakes. Oh, yeah, cupcakes. Don't eat mm -hmm. a cupcake if Pinky gives it to you. You don't know what is in it. Actually, I do have a funny memory of, because of that fan fiction, I remember when I was at, um... The first pony convention. It was Equestria LA. It was in 2012. And oh my god, I haven't heard of that name in a while. I saw that AC Race Best was next to somebody who actually had a big box filled with cupcakes. And it's rainbow colored, so you can tell what it's based <laughs> off of. So he eats one and he offers a AC one and he runs going all, No! We're running down the hall. <laughs> oh my god. That's great. I love that. Like, I'm gonna miss having a home convention that's so close to us. Yeah. There are no it, pony conventions in New York. I'm so mad. What's I mean, the New York Pony Con? I've I, never what? I think that one I think that one's not around anymore. Damn. Yeah, a lot of them don't and like a lot of them don't stay around too long. Like I, I remember the one in Vegas didn't stay around too long either. There were like two of them last I remember. Yeah. Because, like, um, I was talking to Snick about this, and I'm like, well, it's a good thing we're going to BabsCon next year, because um, <laughs> that'll be our last time to go to one that's close for me and other people to go to. Because then after that, then we have to travel, and I'm like, uh, I don't like traveling. I think the other reason, getting back to a duct tape on why I would just, like, want to meet him in person, because I fucking love his editing. And just, like, yeah. I especially, like... For, like, for whatever reason, when it came to, you know, the silly skits with the G5 pones, I'm just laughing my ass off. Like, you see, um, both Zip and Hitch are, like, you know, just getting on. Like, they're all just, like, kissing each other. And then in comes Sunny, jumps in from the frame, tackles, like, Hitch on the ground, and it's off screen, <laughs> and the screen shakes for a bit, and you hear a bunch of punching sounds. Like, okay, yeah, Sunny was not happy to see that. There's, like, you this know what makes that? You know what makes that even more impressive is that he did that with G4 ponies. So it was like he, he had to edit. No, he did it with um. Gen with, five um, ponies. No, what the hell am I trying to say? He did it with the G mod uh thing. Oh, mm -hmm. G mod, yeah. Yeah, so he had to like pose them, and he also had to edit the video. So that's pretty impressive. I also like the one uh, video he did where um, it was one. Granted, it was with my old design, but it was with me and Wolfhead. <laughs> Wait. Well, I think you remember this one. I do not. Do I have to send it to you? Yes. Hold All on, right. let me send it to you. Let me find it on his channel, because I know it's on his channel. Oh wait, no! Is that the one where you caught the tire in fucking? No, that's my that's my compilation thing. No. Oh. Let me find the video. Hold on. I'm so mad that I can't. I don't want to use Photoshop. What did you say you used, Juke? Inkscape? Yep, Inkscape. Okay, I'm gonna look for Inkscape. Let me see if I can find it. Give me Inkscape! Alright, uh... Yep. There should be a version of it that's free to use. Alright. Okay, I'm sending it to Wolfhead. Oh, wait, 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 there's one more. I'm just gonna go there ahead go, and just show all these here. So... My variations are purple, pink and red, green, blue, yellow, and orange. I'm going to go ahead and... I'm going to go ahead and post this for two minutes. Choose a color. Choose a color. 
Yep, choose a color. Okay, okay. I gotta go with green. Okay, so we have green. Go ahead. It's green's, green's lucky, and it's actually the color of my eyes. Oh, nice. Mm. Oh, okay, so green is I... in the lead. Purple is uh, <laughs> purple is uh, in Come on, second. let's go, Team Green. <laughs> Come on, let's see the yellow ones get chosen too. Yeah, Wolf, do you remember the video now that I sent it to you? Yes, I remember it now. It's so <laughs> fitting that I gotta be the one that's like the internet is for porn. You know. <laughs> Zaldin He's asking what yeah. you plan on doing with each of the beads. That's what I was just Yeah, Zaldin, go ahead and make a vote. It's uh there's a poll. Yep, there we go. I'm I gonna go ahead Duct and just the... make a vote. I remember myself. when Duct made that video, like when Duct made that video, I was just like telling him to, to while he was making it, I'm like, this seems like a normal conversation that Wolfhead and I have. Yeah. Well one minute, uh Chuka. So, Zaldan, to answer your question, I plan to do um, mostly video game sprites, which apparently they seem to sell well. Why am I losing frames? I don't get it. Yeah. No. You're losing frames. That's not good. How many frames did you drop? 1,179. Mm, that's, that's not a lot, but that is uh, an amount. <laughs> There's no love to yellow or orange. Green is still in the lead. Yeah, Team Green. Mm -mm. I also like placing an order for uh, mini beads, which are actually smaller than these ones. And yeah, these are already small as is. But there's like tinier ones, and I want to use those to try to make... Um, well, y you'll see for a future reference. Mobile camp vote. Ah, oh, damn it. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> All right. So green wins. Okay. So from this point on. Fuck you! And give me the money you owe me. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't resist. All right. So anyway, how this is gonna go now is with green being the winner, blue's gonna be second after that. Red and pink, uh, red and purple. I'm gonna have like two and two together for the next poll because they're both at a tie. And I'm saving the orange one for last. All right. Much for your OC's colors. Yeah. All right. Here we go. Give me a perler bead, Goldie. I require your finest perler bead, Goldie. Oh, there's still more. They're hiding. Is that a bowl of milk? Oh, no, it's not. <laughs> what the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> I thought you had, like, a small bowl of milk. And I thought this man was going to start drinking the milk. That, like, the container lid? Yeah, I thought the container lid. I thought Golden had a small thing of milk. <laughs> Gee, Snickerman, I hadn't noticed. <laughs> Listen, I'm very tired. You should go sleep. Yeah. No. If yeah, you're don't, tired, Wolfhead, don't deprive you yourself of a beauty rest. You do not deprive. You can't make me sleep. <laughs> oh my gosh. Um. It's supposed to rain tomorrow here, and I'm like, oh fun. The kids are gonna be inside all day tomorrow. That's gonna be so much fun. So much it, chaos. Rained, it rained today, and I was so mad because I had to go to the bank uh, <laughs> while I was at work, but I didn't go because not only is it raining, it's also winding really hard. Winding? Winding. I don't want to say blow. Windy, thank you. Winding. <laughs> it's winding. I mean, you know what's funny? I'm going to just keep saying winding. It's winding. <laughs> and every time you go outside you see people get their umbrellas blown out of their hands and I'm like you know what I'm not even going to open my umbrella oh wait well, I did, that's going to be a new quote on my night bot this is saying that now All right, this is more lime green uh, let's say this is vanilla green uh, yeah I'm just, I'm just like oh great the kids are going to be inside all day tomorrow uh, it's going to be chaos because all the kids are coming back from their breaks it's like uh I actually don't want to go to work tomorrow, but I'm going to go. 
I mean, I kind of have to. This is technically my full last month of work before graduation, so I'm like, I have to be there. I want to learn how to animate. I want to draw you and then make that drawing move. Who? I have. Have I mentioned I'm very tired? <laughs> All I hear you say is you want to animate me and Walk make that, me go move. to bed. No. <laughs> go to bed. I freaking I want to be here. Well, if you're saying random things that you make me no sense. be here tomorrow. I'm going to stream Final Fantasy VI. What did you just say to me? I He's said... going to stream Final Fantasy VI tomorrow. Oh. Why not seven? I haven't played seven yet, and six I want to finish. Okay, okay. After that, you gotta play seven. Seven is the one I said, right? Yeah, seven. <laughs> Go to bed. <laughs> Go to bed, woman. Chat, vote <laughs> yay if you want Golden to play the original Final <laughs> Fantasy <laughs> Seven. Dude, You're everybody's gonna unanimously vote yes. <laughs> Let me see them yays in the <laughs> chat. <laughs> Juke. I thought, I thought, I thought Dice said breed, but that time she says bread. <laughs> because this guy is putting me to sleep. Ben, what did you think Dice said? I thought he said breed, but it says bread. What is with you with the term? Because this is the second time you got some sort of mix up over the term breed. Because I remember, like, the other year... You got mixed up, y'all. Oh, Final Fantasy VI. I know nothing, but I see Fox is kind of enjoying it. Um, oh. But I remember um, Shuka said she wanted to be a dog breeder, and you're like, oh, so that means you get two dogs and make a fuck? I'm like, no, dumbass. It was a dog groomer. <laughs> yeah, yeah, dog groomer, yeah. Because people thought groom was another term for, like, having them fucked. Like, no, dude, they need you clean them. <laughs> I don't remember this conversation. It was Dice, a Dice, you know where to look. You know where to look. You know exactly what I'm talking about. That dude's a fucking encyclopedia <laughs> on my Twitch clips. But I, this <laughs> does sound like a mistake I will make. Chad, what do you mean, nay? Let Golden finish the other game first. You I don't want him to have the. You don't want him to have the big anime sword. Or be the big anime sword guy? He can have it later. He needs to finish the other game first. Yeah, there's like a slice. In the words of Badanon, one game at a time. <laughs> yeah, really. <laughs> I, I need to, to follow that advice considering I do multiple things at once and then never finish anything as a result. I tried to download Minecraft again just to see if it would download now. My computer will. My, my computer refuses to download Minecraft even though it's a Windows computer. I'm like, I am not going to be able to play Minecraft ever again. <laughs> well, if he can play 7 when he finishes 6. I'm not telling him to play it now. But he needs the big buster sword. Is that what the sword is called? The buster sword? Hey, buster. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> well, the buster sword is the very first sword you have equipped at the start of the game. I'm not surprised it that it would be named something like that. I mean, you have... Fucking, what's it called? Uh, Sasha from TF2. <laughs> this thing weighs more than you. Why are you carrying Sasha? This thing has a name? <laughs> oh. Now I'm trying to think of if I had a thing. What thing would I have to have to name it to give it like a name i'm looking around my room now oh my gosh <laughs> i don't hold any sentimental value to like things why i they're just things things are fleeting <laughs> oh yeah um wolf Ed, i showed this um tiktok to snick earlier it was really cute and funny it was um it was a cat and then they had like it meowing to the song Poison from Hello not Hello Bus, Hasman Hotel. And they like edited the video 
That way it made it sound like it was singing in the right key at the right times. Oh, God. And it looked so cute. It sounded so cute. I was like, oh my gosh, yes. Dice, you just sent me an Umbrella video, and I like this video. I, I've seen it before, but it's very well... Uh, edited is not the right word. Animated, I want to say? Because I think that some of this is CGI. This has to be like a... An, a college project this small video holy shit that's good i wish i could make shit like that damn it cannot, though. it's a solid what happened i was holding a, a bead and it just like fell out of my grip lime green as long as it didn't fall into your food that's true turquoise just imagine you're eating turquoise. you're eating and the next thing you next thing you know you're chewing on a pearly be like oh that's where it went it's like oh ouch that, that would hurt the teeth better. Better than getting a hot dog stuck in your esophagus. Oh God! Yeah, yeah. No, we we will never forget that. Did you? I just, certainly won't. Did you see that video of that guy who's like, <laughs> and then he he he, he, he swallows hot dogs whole, but then he spits them back up and eats them again. <laughs> he spits them up into the sky and then they land back into his mouth. Well, the, okay. I'd rather not think about it. I still remember the Simpsons. Like this, like it didn't happen like this, but I do remember there was. Um, it was at the start of an episode, and Homer was just like completely wailing on the uh, the, the the donuts, and his coworkers hey, are like, kitty. "Hey, Homer, slow down! You're gonna choke or something. Don't tell me how to eat donuts." <laughs> hey, Homer's <laughs> choking again. <laughs> Hi, Kitty. How are you doing? Kitty, how many donuts do you think you can eat before you can't eat any more dough? What the nuts? fuck? Bitch, <laughs> I go to the fucking gym. I haven't had a donut in like three years. Uh, Good on you. <laughs> I'm not envious of that. Donuts are still pretty delicious. <laughs> I'm not saying they're bad. I'm just saying like I, I have a bad problem eating bad food. So I purposely do not get bad food in my house. So I'll have like trail mix. That's about it. My dessert is a yogurt with flaxseed. <laughs> okay. Could you eat a um? If you weren't going to the gym, and if you weren't watching your your figure or your weight or whatever you're doing, would you get would you get like a Dunkin' Donut size box of donuts? And could you eat all of them? Um. You know what? Probably yes. Yeah. Same here. I Hell I yeah. I will admit I love me some Dunkin' Donuts. They have the best fucking coffee. <laughs> Did you say coffee? Coffee. <laughs> what? Talks about eating donuts. Yeah, you pronounce it. Hold on, hold on, hold on. One minute. Talks about donuts. She decides, oh, I'll go to Dunkin' Don. Um, not Dunkin'. Uh, Krispy Kreme donuts just for a thing of coffee. <laughs> I've never had a Krispy Kreme donut. Oh, wait, it was Dunkin' Donuts. Sorry, I got those two mixed up. Oh, my God. What? What? That got I me. think someone else is <laughs> just as tired as Wolfhead. No. Listen, I, I love coffee. I will drink coffee. I am a caffeine addict. I no, will not lie. For caffeine, that reminds me. Give me a second. I have a Keurig, so you know I'd be drinking that uh, dirty bean water. Listen, that I, dirty bean water is so good. I say give me tea any day. I'm not a coffee person. Well, I had tea like once. Too. I had tea once and I was like, nah, I'd rather drink coffee. Well, Fed, have you been in the have you been in a call with me and Snick when I've said like, Oh, I wanna get some sugar in my body and he's just like, Huh, no, you don't need more sugar. You're already hyper as it is. <laughs> Wait, would you eat like a um well, you're not, like, taking a bag of Domino sugar. Oh, my God, that's the same name of my pony. Holy shit, I just realized that. <laughs> Wait, your your pony's name is Red Bull? No, Domino... Anyway. <laughs> I thought your horse was named Domino's. My horse is named Domino, not Domino's. Oh, I, thought, I was thinking of the pizza. I was like, damn, I that's a cute name. I could go for one of those. <laughs> I could what go the... for pizza, but I can't. I need to go to the gym tomorrow night. What the hell was I saying? Okay, it, Snake is acting like oh. you're taking a bag of Domino sugar and just shoving it in your face. Because <laughs> the reason I mentioned it was because, like, I was telling him, I was like, I was like, 
I was like, oh, when we go on our trip in June, can I just get a whole bunch of sugar and eat it? And he's like, no. Why? <laughs> he's like, you know what I'm you like... need? You know what you need? Snake needs to carry around like a bag of sugar cubes. No. You every now and now and then. Did... Not all the time. Just like every like, I don't know, 10 minutes. Dude, he's going to fucking pass out. <laughs> Too much sugar Golden. is bad for you. Golden, would you rather drink? You're a Red Bull guy. I'm a monster guy. Mm. <laughs> you know what? That's fair. Red Bull gives you wings. Even though I haven't drank monster in a long time. But I'd you know, rather have a monster than a Red you Bull. You know what this reminds me of? Um, mm -hmm. So, I don't know if any of you from the older times of the uh, Brony fandom, there was a voice actress. She's got a professional uh, direction in her career now, but... um, <sighs> Shit. Her name is leaving my head, but she was able to voice many, many different ponies. Um, her OC was a pink alicorn, and the joke behind it was that she was once a unicorn, and she grew wings by drinking Red Bull. <laughs> okay, okay. I, I think it was like that. Melee something. Also, goodnight, Snake. Rena Chan, that's who it was. That name sounds familiar. Yeah. Oh, I um, remember her. She's... Go ahead. Being in the voice acting community, you would hear the tales and the legends of Rena Chan. Yep. But yeah, glad well, she uh she got her career off the dwayne. I'm happy for her, even though I... that probably happened a while ago. Mm-hmm. <coughs> yeah. Yeah, give me the elite trading, boy. Give me that elite monster energy drink. Wait, that's just the blue one. No. I cut out energy drinks. They're so bad. But I respect I, if you guys like them. I heard they're terrible for you, but I still drink. I, I have terrible eating habits. Did you guys see on Twitter where I was like, where I was like, I retweeted a picture that was like, name something you won't eat, and I said vegetables? And I don't even use comments, Twitter. Half of the comments are like, Wolf, how could you? What is wrong you, with you? Dude, veggies are so rad, bro. Broccoli. I, I'm sure they are. They're gnarlicious. Veggies are <laughs> so important because fiber, fiber is found in a lot of veggies, which is really important because there's nothing worse than getting... It's such constipation. A I was going to say shit getting stuck in the gut. Veggies so constipation. Yes, the <laughs> constipation is. You gotta oh, mac God, out microphone. some gnarlicious veggies, man. <sighs> bell peppers? Gnarlicious? I'm not sure I've... about bell peppers. I like the flavor, but I'm not a big fan of the texture. I do love broccoli, though. Broccoli so... is so rich. Broccoli Snick can was... be really good. Yeah. Yeah, Snick was talking to me about broccoli, yeah, and I was broccoli. like, I'm putting some cheese on those motherfuckers if I'm eating broccoli. I love putting them in ketchup. What the fuck? Soy okay, soy sauce, yes, but ketchup? Yeah, I've been... I'll put ketchup on my carrots. I'll put ketchup on my broccoli. Oh. I'll put ketchup on uh, my mixed veggies. Like, it's been a thing since I was a little kid. Are Kitty. You ketchup -holic? It's Kitty. Pretty funny. Ketchup is an insult to the chef. Listen, if I want my ketchup, I'm going to eat my ketchup. It is delicious. Why'd you, Something's why'd you say it like you were the chef? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so something ketchup. tells me, Katie, something tells me you're going to really enjoy being with that one kitchen with... If you remember Cow and Chicken, there was an episode oh, where the cafeteria was literally offering everything made with ketchup. Yeah, I remember that episode. As soon as he said cow and chicken, I was just like, ah, oh, here it comes. Here There's it nothing comes. wrong with ketchup on hot dogs, equestrian guy. It's the fact that putting ketchup on some on veggies like broccoli seems really uncouth. I like it. I mean, I'm not saying nobody should do it or you have to just, do it. It just sounds incredibly it. unorthodox. It sounds very co I... it sounds very non kosher. I like non it. What is wrong with ketchup? There's nothing wrong. I, I'd rather. I've seen people eat ketchup on hot dogs, and I was just like, oh well. That's what I said. No, 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 no. Like yeah, no. Like, like weird, like I find with that. You know, the funny thing is, I know it's kind of hypocritical for me to say this, but I remember back when I was a freshman because I used to like uh, ketchup a lot. 
mom saw that and she literally had a, like a one time thing of a bag of chips that are literally ketchup flavored. I okay, thought. that's a little bit too far for me. I had just had that one bag because like that was enough for me. <laughs> oh, I like, also love ketchup on bread. I thought, Golden, I actually thought you were going to say that my mom found out I love ketchup, so she hid all the ketchup in the house. <laughs> so back to the topic of veggies. There's a lot of decent Asian cuisine that has arguably better veggies than meat. That doesn't surprise me. Are yeah. green onions one of them? Is what I you cut out? God damn it, Discord! Does that include green onions? Oh yeah, green onions go really good. Like one of my favorite, I one of my favorite Asian dishes is at this Vietnamese restaurant. It's called pho. It's basically like this soup. <laughs> it's really good with green onions and and I think red onions too. I'm now just thinking of that song, Green Onions. Wah 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 wah. Wah, 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 wah. From the sand lot. Mm. Yeah, I could just eat that pho all day and never crave meat. You know what's really good? Having tofu with some ketchup and broccoli. <laughs> now what's that? What are you laughing at me for? Because <laughs> I'm <laughs> expecting you to be like, to just start naming foods and then just act, adding like ketchup to the equation and being like, this is so yummy. Well, are we going to have to... Like, I gonna love... Have to tofu tofu is so good are we gonna have to call this segment kitty's kitchen <laughs> well, my kitchen you guys wouldn't like it's very sad you wouldn't like what i eat on a daily basis i've told i've already told you that like my eating habits are terrible so <laughs> well i mean there's this i uh, ever heard of flaxseed what the hell is yeah that? i've heard of it it's good for you. It's a. It helps with fiber. It, there's like a lot of benefits if you eat it. I like to mix up. I just need like a little teaspoon. So I take a spoon and I put it in my yogurt in the morning and I'll swish it all up and I eat it like that. And I also eat like this really bomb ass salad I can get at Walmart. It's really great. I, I still remember the days when my mother would put flaxseed in a lot of dessert dishes. Well, yeah, it's oh. great. And I, what I love to do in the spring and summer, and I did this for a year, is that I would make my breakfast and it'd be a totally uh, rad smoothie. So I would put like like fruit in it and then yogurt and then soy, uh, not soy milk, uh, almond milk. And then I would put protein powder and whey protein powder. And then I would blend it up and that would be my breakfast. And that would hold me over for four hours because I don't take breaks. And then I would eat my lunch. And it'll be like a sandwich. Usually it's peanut butter, or it's like uh, it's a very high intense protein sandwich. And then I go for another four hours, and then I go home and I, or or I go to the gym now. I am probably gonna. Hit so it sounds like you live a pretty healthy lifestyle. All right, Shuka, have a good part. night. You too. Bye, Shuka. Enjoy, enjoy your stream tomorrow. Yep. Bye. I try to live healthy. I I try to live healthy as well, though. I still indulge in a few items every now and then. Oh, yeah. You should restrict totally. Just, like, you know, try to... It's a lifestyle. It's, it really is a lifestyle. If Yeah, because and... if anything, if you try to, like, go cold turkey on just eating healthy foods, you're going to relapse so fucking hard. You'll, yeah, you'll relapse. <laughs> It'd be bad. I'm curious. It's okay, plan. Dice. I got it taken care of. What? Uh, his message was being automated. Oh, okay. Um, but I'm I'm really curious, Wolf. Like, n n and I'm just curious. And you don't have to answer if you don't want to. It's not a bad question. I'm um, an open book. Go ahead. Okay. Well, I was just being respectful. Um, what makes you like not like veggie? Just curious. Scribbler asked me the same question, and I'm gonna give you the same answer I gave her. Okay. I think it's solely because my mom, growing up, never forced me to eat vegetables in any capacity. So growing up, I never developed a taste for veg vegetables. Like, I would never go out and seek broccoli. I would never go out and seek carrots. I would never go out and seek peas or corn or any of that. But, like, fast food, I'll eat that all the time. Uh, I'll eat processed food. Like, I keep telling you, my eating habits are terrible. I, so I didn't know they I were that bad. I thought it was just like, it was the texture, or maybe you had a bad experience with that. That's, that's a <laughs> weird... I got uh, uh, 
<laughs> I'm going to be honest, that is a very weird answer because everybody else would hate vegetables because they're forced oh, to them. eat it and they don't seek the joy into it because it doesn't taste as sweet or as, you know, the things that are like more artificial and such. Because the taste buds are not this, like, they don't meet the same type of, um, they, they're not on the same page. Like, if you eat something artificial, they make it extra sweet, extra savory, extra tasty compared to mm -hmm. eating something natural, which doesn't have as much of a density of the taste you have. Mm. But there's also That's a the biggest problem. That's the biggest problem with a lot of foods made in America. Yeah. They're made to be yeah. addicting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I agree 100%. Like, I've already seen, uh, what's that movie called, um, Super Size Me, and I know about the recent controversy, but, um, he was right about one thing, um, he started to feel like shit until he ate McDonald's and then he felt better, and that was developing an addiction. So yeah. the problem was, he was, he was still drinking alcohol on the side, off camera, mm. which makes, yeah. <laughs> which makes some of his claims very suspicious. I mean, it's still not healthy to eat fast food on a regular basis. I mean, that much is true. That's true. You know, it's actually the most, like, terrifying, like, not even terrifying, but kind of insulting, is when people, like, there's a segment where kids are sat at a table, and they're shown a picture or a portrait of who that is, and they always remember Ronald McDonald, but there was somebody else, and they're like, no, I don't know who that is. And he turns it around, and it's a picture of Jesus Christ. <laughs> Jesus, Jesus likes the big double. No, 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 no. That's the thing. Kids don't recognize. Kids recognize Ronald McDonald, but they didn't recognize Jesus. I'm like, wow. I'm an I guess it. like, I, like I'm I, an. I'm thinking of that. I'm thinking of that quote from the movie The Founder, where Michael Keaton's character Ray Kroc says that McDonald's is the new American church. It ain't just open on Sundays, boys. I'll bet that was written in favor of Super Size Me because Jesus, like, okay. I'm not, like, I'm an atheist, and even I find that terrifying. Hmm. But yeah, um, I, I don't like, I do not not, I gotta hit you with the double negative there. I do not not, well, I don't hate vegetables. In fact, I have a plan. I gotta mix vegetables into the other shit that I already eat. And then slowly but surely, I will be ushered into a vegetable kingdom. You're gonna love veggies. I feel like you're a green bean man. That's what your aura is giving. Green bean. <laughs> a green bean What man? about sweet peas? Those are good vegetables. Ooh, he, I think he'd be a sweet potato. Ooh. Oh, I dude. I, I could go for a fucking baked potato. Be careful, they have lots of starch. But a uh, sweet potato, I think, is healthy. I, would I eat, eat sweet potatoes a on a regular potato. basis. Mmm. How about a baked sweet potato? Sounds good. You can always use the skins and make potato sandwiches. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, Wolf, you seem like a green bean man. Um, you also seem like you'd be into lettuce, really. I don't know. That's the vibe. I oh, salads. Yes. Uh, particularly, the best, I think, like, in my opinion, I think the best salads to have is kale and spinach. Because they have much more nutrients than iceberg lettuce does. That's true, yes. Yeah. Have you guys ever tried tofu? I have not when tried I was tofu. a kid, I thought it was bland and haven't eaten it since. I have hardly ever like I've hardly had um any tofu so I don't have much of a consensus. Okay, picture a cube. Flat okay. of cube. And it's kind of jelly. You can cook it any which way and you can make it as tasty as you want. And you have full control. Of it. My mom used to cook Bread crumbs, <laughs> excuse me, bread crumbs, uh, and then what? <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> the one you laugh is making me laugh. Laughs, laughs are contagious. It's contagious. Yeah, laughs are uh, contagious. So, she would take tofu and she would egg. She would kind of batter it up with like bread. Crumbs. She would fry it, and then I like mm. to when I was younger take it off and dip it. <laughs> and I was. You're so. cutting out a lot. 
Oh, I'm sorry. So I, she put it, took the tofu, she put it in egg, rolled it around in there, and then she would put it in bread, roll it around in there, fry it. And I would take the fried part that was the breadcrumbs and dip it in ketchup. Reminded me of a burger because my mom was against me. Because after she yeah. had me and my little brother, for some odd reason, she couldn't eat red meat. No, she's just a neurotic. <laughs> All right. Wait, you, you know what else? <laughs> you know what I have to do? You know what I want to do before I die? Other than, like, develop a taste for vegetables? I want to learn how to cook. I want to actually learn how to cook. There is there's something rewarding about learning to cook. Yeah. I was taught how to cook about a decade ago. It's an essential life skill, especially if you're living out on your own. Yeah, no, like, yes. Key loves cooking so much that she did, like, I yeah. think she did some streams where she did some cooking. I was just like, babe, you should make your own cookbook because she made her own recipes before. And it's also cheaper to make things at home and it's a lot healthier. And yes, it is. More nutrition out of it. Yeah, I want to learn how to cook. At some point. <laughs> oh, at some point. I do. Go ahead. When like, so sometimes Just... we we shop in the beginning of the month, and yeah. then once there's like no food, sometimes I do this thing called bad pizza hours. Oh my um, god! Wait, why? bad pizza hours or sad pizza hours? What did sad. you say? I said sad pizza hours. Okay, how can you have pizza and be sad? Explain. So I call it sad pizza hours because I take white, I take bread, it could be wheat or white, it doesn't matter, and I okay. will slather um, some pasta, and then oh, I no. will take some shredded uh, oh, no. uh, mozzarella and put it on top. I would pop that sucker in the microwave <laughs> for like three minutes, and I call it sad pizza hours. Come and get Kitty's sad pizza. They're selling like hotcakes. What do you mean you don't want one? <laughs> Get your sad pizza here! What the fuck? <laughs> oh my God. Listen, listen, you haven't lived until you had sad pizza hours. It's like a very bootleg, like, um... Uh, I think I would challenge that and say I wouldn't know what true depression is if I... You know what? That's a better name. Call it depression pizza. That would be funnier. <laughs> Depression pizza. Get some kitty's delicious depression pizza. Feeling down on the dumps? Have some depression pizza. <laughs> I swear to God, if you make a TV out of this, I will kill all of you. All right, <laughs> it, it would be worth dying for. Oh my God, I. Hate you. <laughs> no, but it's really nice. It's like a, it's, it's like a bootleg. <coughs> Wrong bite. Oh, I guess that was karma. Oh, what about those pocket pizzas? Those, not, not those pocket Hot pizzas. pockets? No, no. You, she means those bagel bite pizzas. Yeah. Not the bagel bite pizzas. It's like... Um, pizza rolls? Oh, yes. That's what I'm Thank you. They okay. kind of taste like pizza roll. Okay. I, I haven't had a pizza rolls pizza. in several years. Because last time I ate those, it made me so nauseated that I vomited. Wait. Well the then. fucking... The toast... The Tostitos <laughs> pizza rolls? Yeah. Hmm. See, this is where our my palate and my stomach are vastly different from yours because I just ate like a bag of those um, about a week ago and I was fine. I question That's how you that. can even stomach that shit. I I just I just fucking down it, bro. I, just I mean, like up, well, everybody's gone. everybody's like it's not even their taste buds. Everyone's stomachs and the way the digestive works is all different. Um, like I'm not gonna get into details about Chrissy's, but um, I know that there's some people who's like. Because, I don't know if you guys heard the story with Bliss having brownies that were mixed with, uh, what was it, Skittles? Oh, yeah, I remember this story! I thought you were yeah. about to say the brownies were, like, laced with weed. I was so confused. <laughs> <laughs> no, that would actually be problematic. I, mean, I was actually, weed, I was actually, I was actually thinking, I was actually thinking, I was actually thinking in my head, Some don't tell me somebody mixed brownies with laxatives. That's that would be that. Evil. That's an evil prank. That's just that actually evil. happened one time in my neighborhood. <laughs> I, I send that I man still to remember jail. Clear as day. <laughs> Don't put laxatives in the brownies. Don't put weed in the brownies. Don't put skittles in the brownies. Anyway, fucking golden Sorry to interrupt. The story. I was. I'm now just like I'm now just remembering that's a uh, not even a skit, but that scene from um I think it was American Pie. 
where uh, what's his name, Sean William Austin, he um, he switched uh, like some kind of like some kind of laxative liquid into uh, someone's uh, frap or frappuccino, and the next shot is a guy running straight to the bathroom. <laughs> it's like I just slipped in have... there while he was turning away. <laughs> He's gonna have to change his pants. Oh no, he was able to, he finally got in there, but he had to hold in his, um, his bowel movement because he accidentally walked into the ladies' room. He's like, oh shit. That is the worst. That is actually the worst. <laughs> I still have yet to, like, watch the rest of American Pie, but I remember seeing that scene. Because, um, because there was, um, it popped up on my recommendation feed when I watched, uh, you ever seen Van Wilder? I've heard of Van Wilder. Okay, I think uh, that was one of Ryan Reynolds' earlier movies, but um, there was a scene where his competitor was being so shitty to his girlfriend that he was up for, like, a final examination and a job interview, and she sabotages him by making him a fruit, um, making him a smoothie, a, a, a protein shake, that's what it was, and she sneaks in a thing of colon blow. So while he's at the exam, he has to hold in his butt while he's, like, doing his exam, and he lets out a couple of farts, and then he's like, dude, I can't take it anymore. And when he's on his way to rush to the bathroom, he gets held up by somebody who drags him into the interview, and with no time to spare, he finds the nearest trash can and just completely unloads. It's much funnier when you actually see the movie. He's like, oh, I'm bleeding! And somebody's like, oh my god, that's wretched. <laughs> Oh my god. Bad of that video. Well, the, like, the other thing is, is that while he has to take the test, he looks at the sign and it says, no bathroom breaks. It's like, oh, shit. You know what this makes me think of? What? It makes me think of this really old Flash game called Don't Shit Your Pants. I don't know if any of you have ever heard of it. <laughs> no, that but I imagine like that sounds like something off of Newgrounds. Yeah, that sounds like in the in the group of games, it's like, oh, don't whack your boss, or you're like, don't like. I'm gonna post don't a whack your ball. I'm gonna <laughs> post a link to the game in the gaming discussion Discord. Also, share it in the so Twitch chat. Can see it. Yeah, be sure to share it in the um the Twitch chat so oh, that they yes. don't feel left out. Yeah, just posted it. Oh my god! All right, what the fuck is this? <laughs> Four, it's six. <laughs> Did you find it? Okay. Try pushing the Oh my god, it's a type command. <laughs> yes, it's one of those. It's one of those command prompt games. Oh god. <laughs> That's horrible. <laughs> but it makes it more creative. Hang on, mark apart? You know what, I'm not surprised. I, I also know that there was, like, some kind of game where he and Jacksepticeye played, where you, you, you play as a dude, like, a guy is at the top of a skyscraper, and you have to launch and uh, project his uh, shit wherever he craps, and it's supposed to create, like, some kind of, like, like, some kind of shooting gallery or something. <laughs> No, it's not going to show on stream. I just went to watch them myself. There's, like, no audio put into it or anything. You know, the whole idea of having to hold in your bowel movements is like the equivalent of realizing this in reality. God fucking damn it! You motherfucker! That's not going to stop, is it? No, wait, it stopped, it stopped. Thank God. I thought that was my whole game from... When did Star Stable at that? <laughs> when were what? <laughs> I did not understand that question. I said I thought it was my horse game, Star Stable, and I was like, what the fuck? Why is it playing this noise? It's from Sonic That's 2! Actually from Sonic the Hedgehog. Yeah, oh yeah, it was I've never played a Sonic game. Okay, so I will say this much, Kitty. If your character is jumping around underwater for too long, that place and you have five seconds to five either you have to either reach the surface or find an air bubble. Otherwise, your character dies. Like, he he literally drowns. Where oh. in the goddamn hell is this lair? What, what lair? lair? Don't, don't worry about me. I'm doing something else. Are you playing working on an too? art program? I'm working on an art program, yes. Are you using Inkscape? No, I'm using some bullshit backwater 
<laughs> website I found. It's going good, I think. Wait, what the hell is this button? Oh, that's undo. Never mind. Have I ever told you the legend of Jerry? <laughs> what? The many I names you come you up with, I'm just like, what the fuck even is that? <laughs> He's the Goodwill ghost. The Goodwill ghost. Okay, now I don't want to go, like, walking into a Goodwill store. Thanks. No, so, I have this app, and it's like a ghost hunting app. And so, we ended up finding this guy. We ended up, like, finding, like, the weird shit started happening. Like, like things started moving on their own, and weird stuff just randomly happened. And we kept hearing scratching on Anyway, so, we wanted to name the ghost, and we asked for his name, and we're like, alright, what's your name? And his, it's a Jerry. So we think his name, so we're assuming his name is Jerry, and then we, I just said, well, we'll just call him Jerry Myrtle. You called, you gave, <laughs> you gave this ghost a name that wasn't him, disrespected him in his own house, in his own ghost house, by giving him a name that's not his. <laughs> no, his, this is Jerry, and then I thought his name was Myrtle at first, so it just kind of became Jerry Myrtle, and I always thought he was... He was this Amish-like looking man. Listen, if your name is Myrtle... You know what? Never mind. <laughs> I'm just not remembering Moaning Myrtle from Harry Potter. <laughs> Moaning that Myrtle. Like a, that sounds like a weird porno. I'm not gonna lie to you, man. What the fuck? Moaning Myrtle? <sighs> when you understand the context and watching Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets, Kitty, you're gonna regret ever drawing that conclusion. Wait, I'm trying to remember who Moaning like... Myrtle was. She was a little Potter. girl who was killed in a bathroom. Uh, yep, that rings a few bells. Yep, oh, you are when correct. You just say, when I hear Moaning Myrtle, I think of a really weird grandma porno. I don't know why. That's where my brain goes. <laughs> why? Because the name Myrtle it conjures old... up an image of an elderly woman in your head? <laughs> Listen, when I used to take care of elderly people, we have women, we have women named like Mary Lou, Matilda... You know, what's her name? Winona. <laughs> you know, we had really weird, like, old names. Uh, Jean. You can't be 13 years old and named Myrtle. You just can't. It's illegal. How is that? What the fuck do you know about names, man? Listen, Jerry Listen, Myrtle. I have a degree in names, all right? I went to name school. I want, like, a photocopy of they... that bullshit. Listen, listen, Jordan. <laughs> Golden, listen, they call on deaf when they, uh, not deaf, they call on a wolf when they need a new baby name. They, that's the man that gives people baby names, okay? That's his job. I, this is not my job, first of all. <laughs> hey, Golden, have you ever played Sonic Unleashed? There's that's a, not me asking you that that's, question, that's the chat. That's a lot of Sonic, there's a lot of Sonic games I have not played yet, and there's some I would rather not play for the obvious reasons. Like, I'm not going to play Sonic 06, I am not that masochistic. But like you don't have to because I'm gonna play Sonic 06. Oh, okay. good. Have fun. Have fun with a horrible story between Sonic and the princess. Shoot me in the How goddamn you know? face. Is that How do you line? know you're not gonna be there for the stream? Well, that depends on your schedule, like our schedules. Yeah, exactly. What oh. about any of the Sonic games on Game Gear? Um, I will say that I have played. Shut up, Equestrian Guy! I've already seen Keyframe play that piece of shit. Sonic Dreams? Oh, the Sonic Dreams collection? Oh, yeah, I added Do not, <laughs> yeah. Do not play that. That is disturbing as fuck. The Sonic fans are just way fucking weird at that shit. <laughs> I watched Chat, Darkness everybody. the Curse play that game, and I was like, what the hell is this? <laughs> Chat, everyone needs to go play Sonic Dreams. No! The best Sonic game no. the planet. Do not listen to Wolfhead. Uh, Sonic Chat, Colors, would I, I ever... It, Chat, would I ever scare you wrong? Fuel. Chat, Wolfhead is the honest, upright citizen. Everybody should trust him. Everybody should follow me and trust me and follow my words and teaching. I'll, I'll exactly. back you up. I'll, I'll be a good man. <laughs> I will say this, I did play I did play a little bit of Sonic uh, Frontiers, and I do like the controls so far. I have yet to play more of it, but I wanted to save it until I could um, actually stream the game. My only real obstacle 
is that it has copywritten music because it's got a um, it's got the kick ass soundtrack with um I forgot what the singer's name is but it's got um I'm hanging on to the other side. Nope, not ringing any bells. Good try though. It, it's 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 legit metal music that is played in a Sonic game. Like literally, go look up Sonic Frontiers uh, OST, and it like it blew my mind when I heard that. I was like, wow. This kind of shit is like, it's just marketed for kids because they're playing some metal fucking music. What is the name of that song in the game where Sonic is running down the hill in San Francisco and there's the gun truck? Rolling him? around at the speed of sound. Um, Escape from the city. Yeah. That's more, Sonic... like, that's more like pop punk over there. Shit. Listen, Sonic, the Sonic franchise has taken a lot of criticism. I will say this. The music is pretty good. Like, can we all be on the same page? The music is, is a little bad. That's that's no surprise. Like, I still like, as much as I try to like Sonic Adventure Two, I do love the soundtrack. It's abs. It absolutely slaps. Um, and the same thing with like most of Crush Forty's music, as well as like other songs from like other musicians, like um, what's it called? Um, Believe in Myself, which is the theme for Tales. It's a very cute song. I want to fly high so I can reach the heavens. <laughs> uh, it, something like that. Me, Go ahead. Make me remember when Dan and Aaron were listening to that song. Oh, my God. <coughs> but no, like, I'm you dying. look up the Final uh, Frontier soundtrack, and it's like, it is absolute chef's kiss. Uh, but the lead singer, he used to sing for a band called uh, Killing with Sirens, I think. That's an interesting name. Uh, that's kind of a sequel to... So Shadow the Hedgehog is more of a spinoff. In fact, I heard somewhere that Shadow the Hedgehog was going to be the first entry out of the many spinoffs of other Sonic characters outside of Sonic. Like, there was going to be a game for Tails, there was going to be a game for Knuckles, and I think one for Amy Rose. I don't know exactly. Um, it would have been nice to have something like that. I will say this. Um, what's it called? Tails Adventure on the Game Gear was actually pretty good. I like the idea that it has more of a Metroid sort of vibe to it. Damn it. I gotta find a place for that. And that's probably I, I like... Say, go ahead. I will say one of the best Sonic games that I've ever played doesn't even feature Sonic running anywhere. You know which game I'm talking about. What? We streamed the game. We recorded the game. Is it Sonic Labyrinth? No. <laughs> I heard Sonic... It's the, one where, it's the one where Sonic dies and he's in the Family Guy death pose. Oh, um, the, the, yeah, I remember that one. That one, well, also, like... I like that one. That one was well-written. Like, it, you gotta give it... Yeah, that is true. But, at the, like, at the same... Like, I thought it was all, like, legit. I thought it was all Kellen... Qu yes, that's what it was. It was Sleeping with Sirens. And, yeah, it was Kellen Quinn. He did the um, singing uh, vocals for most of the Sonic Frontier soundtrack. Yeah, guys, go look up their songs. It is absolute fire, but um, but the murder. Uh, I remember that we were all taking turns on like voicing lines and such. That was one of the funnest streams I've ever had. Dude, what that is game is so good. It's it's literally called the Death of Sonic the Hedgehog, and I think it came out April Fool April Fools last year, or the year before that. Something it's like really that. Good. Like I thought it was a legit joke because of that. But no, it was a legit like click um click and answer game, and it turned out to be really good. But like the thing that I really liked about it is that the art had its own particular style while still having the spirit of the characters. I also love that Tails is just with the main character you play as, and he's like solving everything <laughs> but like i i do I still, go ahead i still have that clip from i don't know where i put i think it's like on youtube as its own clip on my channel where you where the main character shows up but he shows up and you're in the middle of talking and you're just like well i have half of my, who the hell is that <laughs> yeah no i remember the character you play as just shows up out of nowhere i'm like who the hell is that because I thought, like, I didn't know there was going to be, like, insert your own character in there. I thought it was going to be, like, you just play as one of the other characters to solve things. Like, you play as either Tails or he plays Knuckles or something. Like, that would have been a cool idea, but I'm not going to bitch too much about it because, as it was, it was it was pretty fun. It was really good. You said the character was Chris and Furry. <laughs> yeah, that was actually way too far. And that's because his hairstyle was terrifyingly similar to Chris's hairstyle. 
That's why I was thinking uh, fucking Chris from um, Sonic, uh, Sonic X. Yeah, Sonic X. Cause, oh my god. Like, yeah. I, I, there's nothing for me to like. Look, there's nothing new for me to say whenever, whenever it comes to uh, Chris, because it's like. <sighs> yeah, you've told us. You at this don't point, like it's a Chris, broken record to like describe. It. It's a broken, a broken record for record literally every. He is... describe him as a self-insert fan fit character. Yeah, he's a unanimously hated character from so many other people that it's like there's no point in like elaborating for like the hundredth time. And you have elaborated probably a thousand times. How many times did I talk about Chris from Sonic X? Yes. Riley was... <laughs> I will say this. Riley was much more passionate about how much he hated Chris. <laughs> like, goddamn. I've never heard Riley rant about Chris, but I've always heard you rant about Chris. Okay, so it was during the Sonic 2 stream that he went on a rant about it. And also, um, Yoshi's Island. Hmm. Well, it's getting late for me. It's almost 11 in my area, and I got work in the morning. So have yourselves a good night. Thanks. About to say have yourself, yourself a merry little, merry little Christmas. <laughs> God damn it. God <laughs> damn it. That was about three months ago. <laughs> I know, but I had to. Listen, listen. I said happy Thanksgiving at least. Bro. Okay. <laughs> I didn't realize we were all living in different time periods. <laughs> oh, you don't know the half of it. Can I be from the time period with the dinosaurs and be human Korok? It's oh, like dude. You know, that does remind me. That does remind me. I saw a clip that Riley shared, and it was kind of made by accident or just made for fun. Basically, like, they call it Dino Blade. It's a couple of dinosaurs who carry a bunch of swords, and I think dragons are included. That looks like fun. It looks so Wait. silly, but looks like fun. I need a clip of this, because how the fuck are they holding swords? They're holding it through the... Give me a second. Let me see if I can find it. Um, it was on... They're holding it with their teeth? Probably. Well, anyway, anyway, thanks for letting me participate, and have yourselves a... All right, bye-bye. Oh, okay. All right, so, Wolfhead, it's in the gaming discussion, and I have it pinned. Okay, let me see. Let's take a look at this. Okay, I see Peach as a mermaid. Hell yeah. I see Peach is a cow. No, no, no. It's a pinned yes. comment. It's a pinned. Okay. I see a pink. How? Wait, hold on. I gotta go to pins. Okay. It looks so fucking cool. Are we talking about Princess Peach Showtime? No. Uh, no. There's a pinned comment that Riley posted. Uh, it, it's from TikTok. Basically, it's dinosaurs holding fucking blades. Like swords. Okay. Yeah, they're holding it with their teeth. But this other dinosaur is holding it with his hands. But he has the kind of arms that look like they can hold swords. You know what I thought? I thought, because you know the T-Rex notoriously has small arms. And I tried to picture the T-Rex holding a sword. Now it's just like, I can't, I can't picture it. I can't picture that no matter what. The dude what. is holding fucking, like, pistols. Okay, yeah, this looks pretty cool. I like this. It's like if, di if like, there was an anime about dinosaurs. Yeah, this is pretty good. Is this a game? Or is this, like, is this, like, alpha footage? What is this? Okay, so, it was just something that was done for shits and giggles. But as it spread around, people were like, dude, make this a game. Oh, shit. All right. Okay. Also, chat, did you... You didn't by any chance hear the music, did you? Because that could have been by accident. Oh no! The whole stream is copyrighted. Cause like that was a that was a skillet song. Oh no! Um, well, I'm about to get answers in a bit. This bitch is riding a mechanical horse. She is not riding a real horse. Oh, uh, okay. You you say what? <laughs> <laughs> Anyways. <laughs> She's riding this this big this magical horse and it Well shit. I'm gonna either have to like commentate more on the song or uh, to fight the claim or I'm gonna have to find some alternative. Cause oops. Use the the spinning monkey song. Spinning what? I yeah, think I Kevin, know what the spinning monkey is. Kevin Malloy, spinning monkeys. Isn't that Kevin McLeod? 
I don't know how to pronounce it. I just know I like that man. <laughs> what the fuck? Spinning Malloy's? <laughs> Kevin Malloy's? What the hell did you say to me? Spinning Malloy. God damn it, now you got me saying it. Um, Kevin Malloy. Kev Kevin McLeod! Oh, okay, okay, so I will be honest. When I first heard about the name Kevin McLeod, the way it was spelled, I used to pronounce for the longest time, I, ca I called it Kevin McLeod. Because how would you say McLeod with an E? I, I just said McLeod no matter how. Because, like, I saw the MC and then Cloud. Even if the E was in there, I was just like, nah, his, name, his last name is McLeod. So I like his royalty-free music. Oh, yeah, no, he, he makes some pretty good uh, royalty-free music, and it's kind of underappreciated. Yep, okay, so everybody heard that. So that was directly off of my, um, whatchamacallit, uh, Discord. So, yeah, I'm going to have to fight a claim on that. I will say, um, some of Skillet's music is enjoyable. I know that Shuka is a ginormous fan of Skillet. Uh, Whispers in the Dark, I did notice that there is a bit of a guitar solo in there when I looked it up. When I, when I heard the song. Um, it's okay. I like that they're, uh, trying to include some guitar solos and not just be your average Joe of, like, alternative rock music. Um, but yeah, uh, just me saying that, I just hope that this is like, hey, you know, YouTube bot, you know, copyright claim bot, we commented on it, we've acknowledged it, it's fair use. And it's in a very short <laughs> amount of, of the song being used. Meanwhile, the YouTube bot just looks at you with his robot eyes, and then they light up, and then a fucking death laser shoots out of it and blows you to a, to a million, a million pieces. Well, not you, but the video. <laughs> you know, it's times like these that I still remember, like, it's not so much as the bot, but it's more so the fact of how uh, some companies and some individual musicians abuse the copyright system, which... If you abuse the copyright system, you're automatically a piece of shit. Like, there is no turning away from that. Or at least a whereabouts. Like, if you go to abuse the law or abuse the uh, system in some particular way, yeah, you're, you're dog shit. Like, you know the other uh, case with H3H3 and um, I forgot what the guy's name was, but H3 was commenting on one of his videos and he literally went and sued him. Yeah. I saw that, I was like, wow, dude, you are a child. If you're going to go bring in, like, if you're going to take this to court because somebody commented on your video, which, for the record, that means under fair use. Because mm. somebody made fun of you on the internet. Like, dude, if you're going to be on the internet, everywhere you go, you're going to get made fun of. Absolutely. It's like high school, but bigger. Yeah, like, there's going to be people who will hate you. They're going to make fun of you for whatever the fuck it is you do. And I can't begin to tell you how many times that people have made fun of me online and tried to get a rise out of me. You know what I did? I moved the fuck on. Because they're trying to get a rise out of you, and they want to do something. They, they want to get a reaction out of you. They're not worth your time. They're not worth your energy. So taking somebody to court because somebody made fun of you online is solving a problem with a sledgehammer. It's, it's going to be a giant mess. Anyway, the thing that pissed me off about how the copyright system gets abused is by the uh, companies or the musicians. And the biggest one being, um, do you know who Charles Berthown is? No, I've never heard of that name. <laughs> okay, so he's a talented musician. He plays the bass, and he's really, really good at it. He did a fretless bass cover of Hotel California, and he got a copyright strike from Don Henley. Okay, but did he did he get it from Don Henley or did he get it from the record label? No, it was Don Henley. Don has such a thorn up his ass whenever it comes to the copyright system. And if you try to cover a song from the Beatles or Deep Purple, you're going to be a deep shit. So you can't cover like Smoke on the Water or Woman from Tokyo. You can't cover Life in the Fast Lane. You can't cover Hotel California or Heartache Tonight or just any song from the Eagles. Or something from Deep Purple. I think that's because of a label issue. But um, when it comes to um, when it comes to the Eagles, yeah, that's Don Henley. Like, there's actually a video that he made off of what's called I think it's called C-SPAN, and he wanted the YouTube copyright system to improve on looking for copyrighted stuff. 
Uh, there's a channel I watch called Become the Night, and he makes a response to how Don handles everything, and he plays up a victim of the amount of times, like, people are using my music for a lot of things. It's already been said that he is, he has been such a crab apple his whole life. And, and now it's starting to show much more. A grumpy old man is. Well, it's not even like, it's not even just him as a grumpy old man. He was just an asshole in general. Like, I'm not going to go bring in names, but there are like other musicians in interviews who said, he's pretty crabby. He's an asshole. Even mom had a horrible experience with him. No, no. Yes. This has nothing to do with what we're talking about. Somebody in the chat said, what is your favorite Peach costume from the new game? I have not played the new game, so I don't have an answer to that. I am sorry. I, I gotta I, look up I gotta look up the costumes. I saw a couple of streamers play it, but I don't I haven't seen all the costumes. It might be the ballerina one for me. I need to play that game so bad. I hear it's good. No, no, it's not. It's the fucking, it's the, the sword woman outfit where she's a sword woman. You know, yep. that's a reference to uh, Ribbon No Kinshin, right? What is that? Ribbon No Kinshin, Princess No. It's a manga and an anime that started in the 50s. Uh, the manga started in the 50s. The um, anime was around the same time as the 60s. Ash Boy and Kimba is made by the same creator, Tezuka. And over time, she has become quite a cultural phenomenon. So she has to disguise herself as a boy in order to rule her kingdom. It's really interesting. That sounds like a I Mulan story. Kingdom. Yeah, but it yeah. was before Mulan. Oh. It was Mulan before Mulan. <laughs> it was before Mulan was cool. Wait, well, hang on a second uh, before Mulan was cool. So, how long ago did this story come out? Was this, like, back in, like... I want... Go ahead. Yes, the 50s or the 60s, I think. Let me double... Okay, because Mulan was based on an ancient poem from, like, the early centuries. Oh, yeah. No, I know that. I was talking about the movie. Okay. Yeah, the original run of the manga was January 93 to 90. So that was the time as Ash Boy and probably can If you asked me, like, women back in the old centuries, they there's probably, like, a lot of cases of women cosplaying as dudes just to get shit done. Just in, like, history. Ah, damn it. There is also a costume where Peach becomes a phantom thief. What the fuck? No. Somebody gotta... Show me a list of all the costumes. Show me a picture of Peach with all the costumes. I say to a general chat room and just waiting for people to give me pictures. The Peach Showtime game looks pretty amazing. Yeah, it looks fun. I want to play it. My friend plays it and like, oh, uh, it, just... it's really, really simple. It looks like, but I think I, I don't think like it's supposed to be difficult at all. I still have yet. To, there's like a ton of Switch games that still have yet to play through like I have a physical copy of Metro Dread. Like, he literally got me that. And I, I, I barely made any progress on the game because I had so much other shit going on. But I also want to play, like, the Forgotten Land of Kirby. Uh, I don't have Smash Ultimate. Boo. I know. There's, a, like, a ton of games I'm missing out on. I just haven't had the chance. Don't play bad. Metroid Dread. I will. I will. <laughs> Meanwhile, Colton is a skeleton. With a picture on his face that says, I'll play Metroid Dread eventually. <laughs> it's like a skeleton with a sign saying, me, still like people waiting for Golden to play Metroid Dread. <laughs> it's like when people were waiting for the next uh, Tool album. Because that was a span of 13 fucking years. Yeah, yeah. Well, I heard the last album was good, wasn't it? it was really oh, I did hear it was good. Like, Def would know all about it. Uh, what's it called? Fear Inoculum? Where's my phone? Kirby is so much fun, and so is Hunt Down. I want to play Kirby Return to Dreamland for the Switch. Aha! I would love gotcha. To play a Switch, but the problem: this girlie dumped three grand into fucking uh, classic car. <laughs> I have a problem. We all have problems. Well, my my car needed fixing, so the alternator died. <sighs> Join the fucking club. We all have a bunch of problems. 
Well, this really wasn't a problem per se. This was just it's something that I bought myself. So like, um, it's I love cars. They're my passions. Okay. Golden, is that a picture of you on your phone? Oh yes, it is. Wait, what? Uh, Golden has a picture of himself as his. It's it, it's a cute drawing that um. Oh, what's her name? Clara P.L. drew me. It's absolutely adorable. It's, Isn't that the Christmas one? Yeah, it was the thumbnail one. I loved it so much. Ah. Yeah. Like, Sit around the old Golden, and I'll tell you a tale from when my back didn't hurt that much. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. I would love to hear those tales. Once upon a time, there was this terrible character in MLP called Diamond Tiara. Oh my god. All the kids, all the kids just start getting up and walking away. You just tell that to, like, your grandkids. Like, what did you do when you were my age, Grandpa? Listen here, Sonny. We've done this joke already. We've done this joke where Golden is old and all he talks Sir. about is Diamond Tiara. Sir, I haven't been on a stream in a hot minute. <laughs> We've done this bit before. We gotta stop I, recycling bits. I, I, was, I was not aware that it was happening. I did not get the memo. <laughs> we gotta think of some, some new material. Being funny is hard, all right? No, being funny isn't hard. It's, is it when it comes naturally, that's when you find gold. Yeah, I'd, that is true. I'd rather be what? naturally funny than try to be funny, you know? What? You know what? That what? is what? actually kind of true. I remember hearing at one point that um, something that I did not agree with, it was from George Carlin, and he said that a joke isn't funny until someone is offended. Like, really? Cause that George co Carlin... Go ahead. George Carlin is kind of a mixed bag of a comedian because he says a lot of stuff I agree with, but a lot of other shit that I don't. So he's like he's like a mixed bag for me. It's like I don't agree with everything he says, but I agree with. Some yeah, stuff. like college humor made some awful things about bronies. Like my little brony was one of the most offensive like pieces of shit. Like labeling a bad image on bronies, and it's like, was it that funny? It really wasn't. It was just demonizing them. I wouldn't consider Making that funny. Them look weirder than what they are. Yeah, because they're only focused on just the negative things, like oh, we're fat and we're creepy and you know stuff. And then like the toys are just saying like we're supposed to be a product for little girls. It's like, wow, okay, so you're focusing more on the status quo and just making us look bad because we're not following it, you know? Although I will say, and Golden, I think you know this about me already, but I'll just tell the chat. One of my favorite episodes of MLP is Fame and Misfortune because it makes bronies so mad. I mean, that's mostly regarding that episode. That's mostly regarding the criticisms behind it. Although, like, even in that department, it's like occasionally they shove certain words in their mouth, saying like, "Oh, it'd be better off that Twilight's like never came to Ponyville." It's like, when did we ever say that? That's kind of a silly argument because the the series wouldn't even exist. Wait, didn't they say that, like, it'll be better if Twilight didn't have wings or didn't come to Ponyville? I might be misremembering. It was both. Um, okay, okay. Some random person said that near the end of the episode. But a TV interviewer guy or an, uh, an article guy was like, because I think it'd be better off if you never came to Ponyville. I'm like, dude, the show wouldn't have existed. When did we ever say that? <laughs> I love that episode. I remember when that episode was at during Bronicon 2017, and at one point, uh, Twilight was coming towards a couple of little fillies saying, hey, maybe ch uh, maybe uh, look into the lesson that, that Rainbow Dash learned from Rainbow Falls, and we were like, no! Because we hated that episode. Is that when all the old ladies go to Vegas? No. That was in season eight. No, Rainbow Falls was in uh, season four, and they were unreasonably demonized in the Wonderbolts, which oh, made us question the overarching narrative of Rainbow Dash wanting to become a part of the Wonderbolts because it was, like, the most vocal part of the entire show. And it still ended hor- Yeah, and it, it still ended horribly with Newbie Dash. That's the- Oh, no! Newbie Dash is the one where she gets hazed. Yeah, that, uh, that episode was awful. Oh, well, you had to be hazed. Like- we don't need those kind of lessons in a little kid show. We watch that show to escape reality, not get a harsh reality check. That's how you end a, like an arc that's been around since the beginning of the show. Good. I wonder, does that happen in like military school? Like supposedly, it like, does. Hey. But even even so, like 
that was not a that was not a smart idea. So Rainbow Rainbow Falls. So it wasn't Rainbow Falls where she gets hazed. It's um. Rainbow Falls is the one where she was uh, competing to get into the um, the equestrian games. Oh shit! Okay, well, that was a little too much. Whoops. Rainbow fame and misfortune made me feel just a little attacked. I'm a, I'm a Everyone's gonna feel attacked. attacked. That's the whole point when of that I was episode. Watching, Good. When I was watching Fame and Misfortune for the first time, I was I felt a little attacked, but then I thought about it and I was like, actually, this episode is good. I like this episode. If it can invoke that kind of reaction out of me, then I think it's like me, the chill one, the one who's like pretty okay with everything. I was like, maybe this is a good episode. I maybe this is a good episode. Half of them. But that's just my opinion. I know a lot of bronies don't like don't like fame and misfortune, which is a big part of why I like it. The, but yeah, that's just me. I'll die on that hill. Something Key mentioned that actually had a good point, because originally M.A. Larson was right in that episode and then decided not to. Um, it's the sheer fact that they still got that episode out because he had some secondary thoughts like, maybe that wasn't such a good idea, and they brought it out anyway without his consent, which... That I can understand. Like, that's not okay. Because it probably made him look bad, in which I'm not going to go pointing the finger at him for. Because that's the other thing. You know, despite how much it angers, you know, certain things in shows or movies can anger us in such a particular way. Um, sometimes you got to, like, think twice before you go finger pointing. Like, you know, if you hate a certain character, like, okay, as you're, like, with Diamond TR and how much I've ranted about how much I can't stand the character. I'm not going to say anything against the voice actress, because she was just doing her job. Similar thing yeah. with the Lion Guard, who was the voice of that badger. Um, I, I forgot his name. Somebody in the chat is going to tell me, but I'm not going to go pointing fingers at the child actor for doing his job voicing the character. He was doing his job. Um, and even that's, with... Go ahead. That's the difference between, like, fans and rabid fans. Because, like, they'll attack the voice actor because they have no grip on reality anymore. Yeah, like, and that's, so like, crazy. you need to see a therapist for that shit. Um, I still remember that still hung... Thank you, Bunga. But it still haunts me to this day when I heard the news about... um, Because I went on a rant on how much I didn't like how Pinky was written at Philly Vanilli. And, um... Well, there's two major factors into it. The first of which is that I heard the rumors about Amy getting death threats because of how Pinky was written. And despite how much I didn't like how Pinky was written, I never, ever meant to direct my anger towards Amy King Rogers, let alone send death threats. But when I heard the news about that, if I knew sooner, I would have had a completely different approach in reviewing that episode, saying, okay, the death threats was unacceptable. I am not a fan of how Pinky was written, but... You got to separate fiction from reality, because if you're if you're so passionate that you don't have a grip on reality, that's a problem, and you need to go see somebody. Like you need to see a therapist instead of sending death threats. Because I would have had a completely different approach. The other of which is that I heard afterwards, because this was like long after she was no longer writing for um, Friendship Is Magic. I think she went to go work for Disney, and she actually stated somewhere, um, the reason why Pinky was written that way is because Hasbro told her to. Because they thought, hee hee ha ha, it's Pinky doing Pinky like nonsense. That's all what it was. It's always the higher ups that mess up the show. Yep. I remember when. Not, um, the, not the creator of this show that actually wants to bring the show to the screen. It's always like the higher ups that are like making dumb changes to the characters that nobody asks for or like being like, Hey, you should have this character do this. And everybody on the writing staff was like, they wouldn't do that. And then the higher ups are just like, well, do it anyway. Yeah. They're, you they're, they're, they're pretty much reluctant to do so or they're otherwise fired. And then somebody also write it and pro still ruin the show, you know? Um, yeah. so that's the thing. Like as much as I still like, as much as I have, you know, a passion over how I feel over certain things, even back then I knew when to have some limitations and after hearing about the news about Amy King Rogers, like some of you weren't around at that time, but when I heard the news, I was ready to throw up. I was, I felt so awful when I heard that Amy was given death threats and I still don't know how true it is. I know that on Twitter, she was defending Pinky's actions and such, 
But I think that's because she was, like, she had to cover her own ass, but still dealing with the red tape over her mouth when you think about it. Because if she said that Hasbro told her, to, like, she, like, told her to do it, she probably would have gotten fired. Yeah. Still got to keep a job, you know? Yeah. And also, I thought, I thought when you said, like, you, you were going to throw up, I really thought that you were going to say I was about to throw hands. <laughs> no, like, I was absolutely terrified. When I heard about that, I was like, oh, God, she actually got death threats. And I was just like browsing around somewhere. There's like Internet forum saying, oh, great. Amy Keaton Rogers is getting death threats on Twitter or something. I'm like, oh, shit. Are you serious? And it bothered me for an entire week. And I had to make a quick video about it. I was like, dude, that's no. Who told you but yeah. But yeah, usually the higher ups are the one to mess up the show. Yeah, uh, I've been speaking of which, I've been watching uh, Owl House, and I'm one episode away from the final episode. I'm like halfway through the second to last episode, uh, and I passed the episode where um, because the big controversy with Owl House is that you know lose the character is bisexual, and ever since it was evident that the character was bisexual, Disney didn't want to. Do have anything to do with the show, right? What is so, it uh, with people developing a stigma with sexual identities in, like, modern TV shows? Isn't this normalized by this point? I mean, I would say so, but there's a beautiful part in the... in in one of the episodes where Luz comes out to um, her mom, and then Gus, who is, uh... He does, like, illusion magic. So, uh -huh. like, Gus... Gus comes out of nowhere and there's like five different versions of him because he's these illusions mm -hmm. and he's waving the bisexual flag around and it, it's it's hilarious because a while ago on twitter somebody posted a screen cap of that exact moment and they were and they were like the creator of the show was like what are you gonna do cancel it more like the show is already canceled we're just trying to wrap it up now like oh. if you want a good example of, you know, let's say, you know, like a same-sex relationship. Uh, what's it called? Nimona? The main character, I think he's gay. Like, he's in a gay relationship, but I don't know if he's gay or if he's bi or pan. But it doesn't explore on that. It's just those two have a love interest together. And it's just put onto yeah, the side just... for the main plot. Like, it, just do something as minimal as that. Don't make a big fuss yeah. about it, you know? The the rumor is is that the reason why Disney didn't pick up Nimona is specifically because that because that didn't that in their words it it, it didn't fit the Disney brand that the main character was dating a guy. Okay, or, that's like, fucking hypocrite. That is so hypocritical because there was a potential relationship in Strange World where a kid was in love with another boy. How old is Strange World? Though? It came out like two years ago. Oh, well, never mind. <laughs> Like, how hypocritical yeah, do you have to be? I don't know, man. I think, and I don't want to put words in Disney's mouth, but I feel like there's a couple of there's a couple of instances where characters are dating the same sex, the same sex as themselves, and Disney gets to decide whether it's too on the nose for them, and if it's too on the nose for them, they just will not support the media. But that's the thing. I the relationship in Nimona was not on the nose. I, Golden, I totally agree with you, but like, <laughs> and I'm not agreeing with Disney at all. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, no, I'm just like, I'm still wondering what the fuck Disney was thinking. Yeah, because this is why I want Nimona to win the Oscars. They didn't win, did they? Had the Oscars passed? The, the Boy and the Heroine won. Okay, The Boy and the Heroine won. But still, I'm glad that Nimona came as far as it did, because Nimona is a fucking fun movie. It, it was. It was so a much. very clever movie. That kind of, I like, think... dives away from the idea behind good versus evil. Because they kind of start to blur when you uh, get to know about Nimona, the character herself. Yeah. I love Nimona as a character, too. She's fun. Where's her arm? Did they let you keep it? Fucking <laughs> <laughs> like gremlin. Yeah, I know. <laughs> but yeah, chat, if you haven't seen Nimona, go watch Nimona. It's still on Netflix, I think. Yeah, it is. It's, it's a really Netflix good. movie. Um, yeah, that's definitely my I recommendation. Netflix. I don't have What'd Netflix. I don't have anything. <laughs> well, you know what? I think they released it on YouTube for like a week and then took it back. 
so this is how like you uh, it's pretty it's not a secret that i live a vintage lifestyle do you want to know how vintage i live do you have like do you have cassette tape players uh yes i do hell yeah oh, god i have a cassette uh a violet boom box that i have with tapes um but the tape player i try to replace the uh tape um band but it ha it's not really working but i also have a walkman from the 80s but basically let's I go don't have, dude kitty i don't have hulu i don't have netflix i don't have any streaming services minus i have TV. like i have like f like 10 of them and i gotta get rid of like half of them <laughs> i just want to say kitty the next time you go to a con bring a fucking boom box and just like walk it around i i am gonna buy another one i want to get another one where i can play my um Paul Abdul tape. I, I like. I think Solar said um, that he wanted to like go to a con, bring a boombox while playing the uh, Top Gun soundtrack. <laughs> hey, you could do that. Um, da da I, da da. I, highway to the danger zone. You should come in my car then. <laughs> you should come in my car, Cause I have a really rad ass car. <laughs> Does this port? button still work? Put some. Pants on. <laughs> put some yeah, fucking put pants, some on. pants on. <laughs> that sounds like something Lyra would say. <laughs> yeah, but it would come from Lyra. Would I remember it? when Lyra, the whole like obsession with humans was a big thing. It's because of the way she sat in it, like in the background. <laughs> yeah. So they conjured up this whole fan theory that Lyra is the only one that knows about humans. Was it ever confirmed? I, no. I kind of dipped out after like season five. And you know what? What was confirmed though, Kitty? Lyra and Bon Bon became an, an item. I saw that like the end, like the very yeah. At the very end, end, they be they got married. Everybody became and gay, and that's how Equestria was made. Oh yeah, all the horses are gay. All the horses are gay in Equestria. Didn't you know, Chat? Yeah, they just like uh, reproduce by um, osmosising. We reproduce by hugging and uh, going on picnics. And then poop. Uh, that sounds like a house. standard in like general cartoon writing. Yeah, What's they don't cartoon? actually have intimate uh, physical uh, sex. They actually just like <laughs> boop their noses together, and then the mare is pregnant, or maybe even the stallion is pregnant. Listen, I don't know how it works. I just. Listen, after nine months, a baby comes out of one of them, and that's it. Yeah, you just that's shit the I baby know. in the toilet. You know, I remember saying during the uh, series finale, I was just sitting there thinking about, you know, Pinky and Cheese Sandwich, and that uh, she has a kid. I was like, wow, uh, Pinky got the weird dick. The weird dick? Listen. Oh, listen. Listen. Weird Al. <laughs> weird Al Yankovic. <laughs> you can't say no to that shit. You don't turn down Weird Al. No, you don't. You literally don't. Carl! 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 I don't know what this voice is. Carl! Are, I thought you were trying to be Carl from Jimmy Neutron for a minute. Oh, God! Carl, <laughs> you, Carl, you don't... Mom? Carl, you don't turn down Weird Al, Carl! Carl! <laughs> When Weird Al gives you the weird dick, you just gotta take it, Carl. Carl! Carl! You sound like a grandma that's, like, so disappointed in her son Carl for not amounting to anything in this life. If hey, here's a memory refresher. Hey, Wolfhead, here's a memory refresher. What? Does Bruno Mars is gay? <laughs> Carl, does Bruno Mars is gay? What'd you say to me? Does Bruno Mars is gay? I don't, I don't think that's a sentence, man. Does Bruno Mars is gay? Carl. Are you having a stroke? Are you all Carl. right? Carl, why? Why, Carl? Why haven't you fucked Weird Al Yankovic? <laughs> why are you doing... Why are you hitting me with the Granny Smith? Kitty, Don't you just now reminded me of when you were voicing Granny Smith and you brought me into that shit. Oh, yeah, that was fun. I still use that voice. I still use that voice. Like, I've been getting spam calls. Yeah, like, just like... So yeah, just like... What's his name? Uh, does that, that old guy voice from Family Guy. Oh, yeah, my husband. Back in my day, we used to... They do it in the bushes. 
which is not very comfortable. I got a lot of twigs you, stuck in my back. You know what's really sad? That's actually a real statement. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> no, because, okay, so here, I'm gonna tell you because my grandparents were, they were teenagers in the late 40s and into the early 50s and they got married in the early 50s. Well, okay. I found. I found out that, like, when teenagers back then or young people wanted to get together in neck and backseat bingo, as they would call it, um, okay. there was a car that was able to turn into a bed, and I was reading oh, a little yeah, little that... ad about it. It's a 1950s, I don't, I want to call it a sedan, but I don't think it's a sedan. Anyway, uh, mm. it could turn into a bed, and you can lay down in it, like, during long trips, and one of the comments said, that's where I was conceived! Like, oh, Carl! Dear God. Carl, I'm bringing my girlfriend back with me to the truck. Did you know it has a bed? It has a seat that can fold down to a bed? Carl, up to two and a half people can fit in that bed. <laughs> Carl, I'm gonna get so lucky tonight. I got my snakeskin condom. Condoms back then couldn't have been that. Oh, my God. <laughs> I there, there was condoms, but, like... They weren't. They the couldn't best. have been that. Yeah, they couldn't have been that good. I mean, they were good. better than like ancient Rome, where there was literally like fucking lamb skin, dude. Yeah, it's better than like wrapping like I don't know, paper towel around your willy and then hoping for the best. God, that's not that gonna stop anything. That sounds awful for both that's parties. Not, it yeah, it does. Like, oh my god. Sound like that feels good. Like I don't want scratchy dick inside me. Thanks. No, thank you. Oh god. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> You're welcome. Hang on, let me see if I can find it. Carl, I got this weird infection from the paper towel uh, condom you gave me. I've been itching for weeks. Go to a I'm doctor. Right now. <laughs> Go Carl, to a... it's the 1950s. All the doctors think that I need to sneeze into a cup and then they're going to put leeches on my legs. Dude, it's, this is the not 1950s, the 1950s, not the 1800s. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna fucking say that was like even before the 1800s. The late 1800s is when like medicine was legit discovered. Because otherwise, back in the older times, if you were sick, they thought you were like cursed or something. Carl, did you know back in history, if a woman was even slightly smart, they would just burn you at the stake? Because back then, women couldn't be smart; it was illegal. Carl, do you know what the Salem Witch Trials are? God, dude, that's now reminding me of when I was watching the uh, Netflix series of Castlevania. It's like, yeah, no, uh, they're, they, they were just... The advancements of technology, they were just not ready to, like, see that yet. They just saw it as witchcraft. Yeah. There was a period in history where, like, it was dangerous to be smart. They would just kill you. Okay. God card... forbid you were a scientist or, like, a woman with common sense. Like, it, it was over for you. Big yikes. I did find the car name. It's called a Nash Air Flight. And it's okay. also a bathtub Nash. It was invented through the late 40s into the early 50s. The vehicle was a choice for outdoorsmen that had seats that turned to reasonably comfortable double beds and the Ooh. living room comfort of six adult riders. A tornadic uh, ability, ventilation and maximum cruising range. Uh, <coughs> so it, it's very nice. And Here's a picture of a mom, Oops. I, I think a kid, and the husband all just laying down on this big old comfy bed. Here, I'm going to post another stream. Here you go. Oh, man. Where is, Where is it? 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 I'm going to add you. Were you just suddenly a broken record? Oh, my God. What the fuck? You, you all can... I see is Bowser. Why does he look like that? It's oh, in the other knows. streams chat. Oh. Oh, yeah. That... Well, if it's the 1950s and you're trying to get laid, I'm just saying you can do worse. You could turn your whole car into a bed, and I think that's really nifty. I would. If love I that. if I was a woman and I was dating a guy and he had this, I'd be like, yeah, we could we could roll around in this for a minute. Dude, like I didn't even know that like cars back then had reclining chairs. Oh yeah, back in the 50s, a lot of cars were quite inventive for their time. Um, sometimes you could put a whole stack of 45s and it can play the records straight in there. Um, some, uh, there was one that was a very offensive car. It was called a La Femme. 
and the La Femme was a car designed for a woman. It had power steering, which was really rare at the time, but also had its own perfume and, and manicure set and everything. There is only, like, I think, four or five made into existence since it was a prototype car. And um, it, the women did not like that because they found it very offensive. And How is it offensive? Women, I can understand, but I like the concept of a very feminine car because, like, it will have things that could meet... Um, my needs, not the makeup or anything per se, but the fact that power steering is a very lovely luxury. Um, there are seats that could turn all the way around in some cars. Um, some of them had like cool gadgets and, com and uh, compartments and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And uh, sometimes uh, shifting was three on a tree. So there will only be like three gear shifts on there. Oh, so it's like it's mm -hmm. like ex oh so for acceleration i know how, yeah. a, how a stick works all right chat oh. chat i'm gonna get golden this a um, car history with golden fox <laughs> with golden fox and pals chat i'm gonna get golden a um a prius and if you don't know what a prius is the fucking it is a lunchbox. car that is it is a car that is so small he can put it in his own pocket no. so he doesn't have to pay for parking get, <laughs> get him a smart car I'm gonna get him a car. I'm gonna just get him like a red wagon with a steering wheel on it. No, wait, hold on, hold on. Give me one minute. Um... <sighs> Carl, have you heard of the red wagon with the steering wheel on it? I got laid in that thing last summer. Isn't that you joke kind of getting cold now? You need to get him one of these. That's in stream chat. Uh, uh, excuse me. Chat, what would be a funny car to get golden in? Don't say a clown car, because that's no. one of those. No, that belongs to Andrew Tate. <laughs> Damn, all right. <laughs> Did you see that picture of Andrew Tate that has him looking normal, but he looks weird? No. Like, it is a picture of Andrew Tate where everybody in the comments is like, why does he look like a thumb? He looks like a thumb. Dude, I don't even... Like, thumb. like, I don't watch videos regarding, like, Andrew Tate because he pisses me off. Wait, hold on. I gotta find this picture. No, I can't find it. I wouldn't even know what the fuck to look for. I what? Just, what do I Google? Like goofy Andrew Tate picture? What the fuck? Just look up Andrew Tate thumb. He looks like a spooked thumb. Like people were cutting his ass. It's an old picture though. Whoops. By right, the way, Wolf, go. I tagged you in something in the other streams. I found the perfect car for Wolf. Oh no. Okay. Somebody in the chat also said, don't get gold in a Tesla. I don't know. Did anyone watch X-Men 97? No, and that's because I don't have Disney Plus, nor do I want to have Disney Plus. We Wait, get... this car? <laughs> that is like a, a beetle. That's like the world's first beetle. No, here's the thing. It is a three-wheeled car. It was made... It's... Um... <laughs> The manufacturers are Romy Villam, BMW, and if I pronounce it right, Ios uh, Auto Vigosi. It's an Italian design micro car, and uh, you can drive it. You open the door in the front, and the wheel and the whole front of the dash come out, and then you just go in and close the whole door and start driving. If Golden <laughs> leans too far to his left, the whole car will tip over. <laughs> yeah, but all he needs to do is sit on like one on like the edge of the one seat in there. That car is tipping over. But he can just get out of the car and then flip it right side up again and just keep driving, I guess. But it's a really and, and you, here here's a picture of it when it opens up. Like when I tell you the whole dash comes out, the whole dash. What the oh my fuck? God. <laughs> Okay, Kitty, you have to show these links in the Twitch chat because they're missing out. Uh, I need to get the Twitch first. Um, hang on. How would you even show these? Wait, hold on. Copy. You can open can it up copy. in the uh, browser and then just click the link. Okay. Uh, let's see. Open in browser. Wait, that's not what I want to do. Carl! Carl, have you heard of this app called Discord? I don't know how to do shit on it. Again with that joke. Here's the car open, and then I'm gonna find Kitty Hyper. <laughs> yeah, I wanted to rebrand, so I was like, ooh, oh, that's my name, but I don't know. I might change it again. Who knows? But um, that—that's the uh, 
that those are the two cars. It is, uh, again, for those that are, uh, don't know, it is uh, an Ista. It is from an Italian brand, and it's very interesting. It's a very interesting car. And, um, there are modern iterations of it. Oh my God, Dice has. <laughs> Dice, did you pick this because it's also another three-wheeled car and it's orange? I remember one of those uh, those Top Gear uh, shows or episodes where literally a dude was driving one of those three-wheeled cars and it tipped over when he was down a hill. You're going to tip this car over, man. You're going to tip this car over. There is it's going gonna, it's gonna to get like a little windy and it's going to like topple over into the fucking river. I'm just trying to remember Ahmed the dead terrorist about the priest. Like, did you know that if you put your arm out on one side, the vehicle will turn? <laughs> <laughs> Fuck, I love that. Oh skit. my god, what is this? That, guys, this is a fucking Hot Wheels car. <laughs> Gold can't fit in that. Well, maybe if you butter them up. And by which I mean you have to actually get a stick of butter You're horrible. and butter him <laughs> up. You. What the fuck, bro? And stick him in there. The fucking windshield will be bursting at the seams. <laughs> his elbows will be in his rib cage. I had to to what? There it is. All right, blue is next. Because that's the second the most voted. The P50. Why are the wheels like the size of donuts? Oh, I found the picture of the Lafemme. Dodge Lafemme. Show me the Lafemme. All right. So Even okay. small. Okay, this is this joke has gone too far. If he can't fit in the car above, he definitely ain't fitting in that shit. All right. All right. So, so here is the Lafem. This is the Lafem. Have to cut the roof off of that shit. That was the car I was telling you. It was a Dodge Fifty Five uh, car. That was a car for women designed by men. A car for women designed by men. That is a red flag. Because a lot of things there is a time I can work with my internet. Sky blue, sky blue, rich blue. I, I really like the car. Oh, do you like the car, Kitty? I Wait, do. is it is it offensive to women though? Well, okay, so Up oh, here it comes. The La Femme stems from the observation of a price for marketing of department that was more a woman were taking interest in automobiles during the 1950s. Okay. And these opinions on which cars would buy became part of the decision making for couples buying an automobile. La Femme was an attempt to gain a foothold within the women auto automobile market. So the concept was based on the Chrysler show cars of 1954 through the name Le Comet. And La Casate, and which let me was turn you built, up. Which was, I'm a little, I, I'm like, so my microphone is on a weird like angle because I'm still not back at my old house. Oh, that's right, you don't know, you don't know I moved, did you? Hi, Blue Circuit. Nope, the more you know. Oh, oh I then this is, a, I'll tell you the story after this, but basically, they made it and they just wanted to, um get into the women's market and the interior was really nice and it came with accessories not including the pink's uh cylinder um but it came with like a purse a umbrella uh with uh, an umbrella cover a compact some makeup a lighter um, wait 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 it came the car came with a purse uh-huh okay came. keep going came with the purse, makeup, it came with a compact, uh, it came with an umbrella, it came okay. with, it looks like a stick of deodorant. Uh, but yeah, apparent... women love deodorant. <laughs> but, uh, they go yeah, crazy but for deodorant. It was apparently dropped by 1957, they not revealed the concept because it was an option package for only $143. My girlfriend picked up a six pack of deodorant the other day. Uh, okay. Tore one out. <laughs> bit right into it. I don't know. <laughs> Trying to create constructed joke where women love the odor but don't know how to use it right. This is this is bad. This is bad. Dice, yep. don't talk to me about postman pat. All right, I've had enough of postman pat. But yeah, it's a it's a gorgeous car. I like it because I have an obsession with the 1950s. No uh, shit. I think. 
But I think it's... I, I, I like the idea of having a pink car that's really girly. I like the car. I mean, look at the dad. I'm Dude. trying to think of Golden squeezing himself right up next to Postman Pat. And look, Postman Pat being like an Uber driver or something. They even had a place for your purse. A, a specific compartment for your purse. It came with a purse and it had like a compartment for the purse. I don't know. I, I like it. I think it. I think it's an interesting concept, but I think it needed to be executed a little bit differently. What the um, fuck is going on outside? Golden. Yes? You're, you are going to make me groggy tomorrow. Really? You did. This is all your fault. How is it my fault? Take some responsibility. To what? <laughs> <laughs> Just speaking very vague. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Context. <laughs> is it because you haven't gone to bed yet? I haven't gone to bed, and I'm probably going to wake up late, and I'm probably going to get to work late. And this go to bed! Go. You dingus, go to bed! <laughs> I find just... I'm just... I'm just fine talking with Kitty on the call. You want to talk to Kitty about 1950 <laughs> stars? I mean, she'll fill in the silence, give people different kinds of trivia. Well, I can actually... You guys want to hear a story? Because, like, I have a hell of a tale to tell you guys. Gather around, everybody. Okay, okay Grandma. Tell me the story, but yeah, Aunt Kitty is going to tell you all his fucking story. Aunt Kitty. Okay, well, I'm already an aunt, so that's good. Okay, Grandma's going to tell you a story. God nice fucking nephew, damn it. <laughs> Not Grandma. Jesus. Um, so you guys... So I, I, I feel like I haven't, like, told you what's been going on with me. So, like, I feel like this is a little bit of an update of my life. Okay. So, did you guys know that I moved out, right? You mentioned that earlier. Okay, so I moved out. We got a notification on the door, and it said, Hey, you know, you're moving out by the end of the month because we have to do some renovations because our apartment complex is not up to code. Uh -huh. So, okay. we ended up waiting and waiting and waiting, and by the end of the month, they said, Hey, you only have a week to get out. And they didn't supply any boxes or nothing, but say, We will. But you have to give us some time. So I, I'm fucking scrambling, and I had to take three days off from work and, co and coinciding with my days off. Oh, my God. And so I had to pack literally everything up and move my whole life uh, into a temporary apartment, which I'm currently in. And uh, then we got another letter at the door, and they said, by the way, your move-in date has been pushed back to uh, the 14th of February. You're supposed to be out by the 2nd. Okay. What a piece said, well, of where? shit move. And then I was like, well, I we need the boxes. Where are those boxes you promised us? So they didn't. They only gave us 11 boxes. We have a lot of shit because I'm a hoarder. I'm a chronic hoarder. And okay. so <laughs> I, I ended up getting the boxes from work and using some of the boxes they donated. So we ended up moving into this temporary apartment. This temporary apartment has been shit for the last almost, no, the last two months I've been here. Uh, lukewarm water, drafty as fuck, and we had really noisy neighbors until we called the cops on them. Mm -hmm. And then, okay. and, and then, uh, we got another letter at the door saying, hi, we don't know when you're going to be able to move back into your old apartment, because it's still being renovated. So I'm not getting out of this damn hellhole until, um, mid-April, if not maybe May. We don't know. We don't know. And, um... I've been uh, living here in a half-renovated place, and it's all backwards. It's all backwards. Everything is on the right-hand side when I'm used to the left. Oh okay. God. So that's, that's where I've kind of been, and, and making money and working out. That's where I've been these last couple of months. Getting paid and getting buffed. And dumping three grand into my car. <laughs> and dumping three grand into your car. Because then my car died, like, last, like, October for no fucking reason. Uh, the, alternator. the alternator was fucked. Well, it's a 93 Oldsmobile convertible. I have a very older car. A woman came up to me, and she was like, Oh, this car is so old. This is 2008. And I start laughing my ass off. I'm like, that's not old. <coughs> you're, you're, you're so 2008. Uh, nope, that's not the lyric. Anyway, go ahead. 
Uh, but yeah, no, I, my, so my alternator died. It's three notches off. Uh, we finally got spark plugs in. My husband put them in today. And it says it's, he's, it's running better, but like there's still something weird about it. So we think there's something going on with the fuel line. And I'm like, oh boy. So he's going to have to get a fuel pressure tester in order to see what's going on. And then I got to dump more money into it in order to get the convertible part to work. Because it doesn't fully latch. It'll come off, but it doesn't latch fully back in. Aww. It's okay. That's what owning a classic car is all about. You dump money into something and you enjoy it and you look like a badass and then it breaks. And we're finally going to get the Cadillac painted. I'm like, where's this fucking money coming from? Because <laughs> I don't have it. He's like, I'm going to make it. Don't worry. I'm like, you better. Because <laughs> we co-own that. So that was the first car, I, a classic car I technically own. Uh. The guy should come up and ride in our cars. I'm gunning next I, for... Mm -hmm. I would totally ride in a car with you. Kitty, that is no We live question. in the same state, so you can come and visit whenever you want. Yeah, literally. Hell, hell yeah. If I want to oh. see Golden Key, I literally need to go across the whole damn country. Yeah, he about have to you fly only... over. California sucks. You can... I'm only like... Oops. I think I'm only like four or five hours away from you. Oh. Possibly. Yeah, depending on traffic. Oy, especially... Don't come during the eclipse. Do not come during the eclipse. It's nope. already getting crowded. Yep. Like, holy crap. Are you guys excited for that? I'm excited for that. I can't wait to see it. When is it happening? The is happening? So the eclipse is happening on the 8th. And it's happening in the sign of Aries. So if you're Aries, this is we're going to astrology territory. If you're an Aries and you've been going through hell, hello, that's me. Um, it's the eclipse. It's not you. And Mercury's currently in retrograde. Mercury... Yeah, Freddie Mercury's in the microwave again. Damn it, Freddie Mercury, get out of there! But yes, I gotta Mama, put hot pockets in there. Ooh, I don't wanna die. I sometimes wish I've never been born at all. But it's literally like passing, like the everybody and who's anybody is coming up to, to upstate New York, and I'm just like, where are all you motherfuckers coming from? <laughs> They're all here to see the eclipse, so I have my sunglasses, so I don't have to Patrick uh, star my eyeballs. <laughs> <laughs> my eyes! <laughs> no, I just think of the scene where where SpongeBob and Patrick are in Lagoon Lagoon, and they're sunbathing, and like. Uh, Spongebob is like staring up at the sun. He's like, ah, oh, isn't a great day? And he's like, I can stare at the sun all day. And his eyes are like fucking like frying. And then he drinks like <laughs> soda and his eyes like grow back. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm like, great. So I love cartoons. Oh, I fucking love Patrick and Spongebob. I, I literally quote Spongebob all the time at work. Oh, no. You oh, and Chrissy great. would get along way too well. Like, what we will, like, uh, sometimes, like, depending on what the situation is, we'll quote a Spongebob, and then I'll f floss in the middle of the floor behind my manager <laughs> while she's talking. God damn it. Oh, yeah, I'm a little shit at my work, but yet they love me because <laughs> they get my work done. I'm and trying let to me... imagine, like, like, Chrissy being Spongebob and Colden being Patrick. I'm just trying to imagine, I would be like, fucking Golden Squidward. Like, yeah, you know what? That's so much better. You would be squishy. I would just be like, no, Patrick, mayonnaise is not an instrument. <laughs> I got three dollars. <laughs> oh, yeah, like, we'll have, like, these stupid huddle meetings at work, and they said something, and then I ended up screaming in relevancy, that's my purse, I don't know you. I forget what we were talking about. We were talking I think about it was, like, Spongebob quotes. Oh, uh... No, 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 at work. Sponge, sponge boy, me Bob. Our Netro, thank you for subbing. I gotta block these. No. I thought you were about to say, I'm gonna block him. I'm like, no! <laughs> oh my <laughs> god, no! I just gave you thank money. Thank you for the sub. Now off to the minus realm you go. <laughs> Jesus Christ, man. No, um, I accidentally moved my logo on uh, my second uh, screen, which is the intro screen. I'm just like, oh shit. I was oh like, my God. fuck, man. Like, that's so evil. SpongeBob, I've overdosed on ketamine, and I can't wake up, or whatever he says. 
So, pardon me for mentioning this. Um, what's it called? You guys ever heard of that uh, fan SpongeBob song called Plan Z? Uh, is that a rap song? No. It's actually a rock song that somebody made, and it was composed using AI voices. Uh, Plankton. Okay, well, okay. Plankton, Plan... I, I've heard of... I heard of the AI Plankton song of, um... Wait, I gotta look it up. I've heard this rapper, like, I think his name is Gooby or something, or Goo. And he'll, like, take, like... AI Spongebob voices, so I just heard- I remember this one where Swimwear's like, Ramadan! I want a cash, I want it all! Yo, oh, I saw that one! That one is good! <laughs> yeah, I was- The secret it was, formula a... will be mine soon enough. You'll all see, you'll all see, you'll all see. Uh, Golden, did you hear, like, the Plankton AI cover to Zombie? In your head! Yeah, I've seen that one, and I've seen the clip where he's, like, taped to the fucking desk, and he's, like, freaking out, and then I see the original clip, and I'm like, oh, it's Spongebob laughing his ass off, and of course, you know that whenever he goes to laugh, it, it sounds like an absolute, like, he, he sounds like a fucking sheep. Yeah. And I was like, dude, I feel his pain. That was awful. Like, I felt bad for Plankton there. But... Kitty, I don't think the channel's name is Gooby, <laughs> I but I know what you're talking about, because, like, I remember Squidward, somebody rapping in a Squidward AI voice, and they were like, I'm a stone face killer like my motherfucking house is, and I was like, why is this line so hard? This is the hardest rap line I've heard in a like, long I've, time. Like, I have, like, a Squidward can't bar like that. Who is this person? I'm a stone face killer like my motherfucking house is. Jesus Christ. And he's like, I'll still pop a cap in your ass, still head around. <laughs> like, okay. Wait, I gotta look it up. I gotta look it up. Shut up. I got SpongeBob AI rap. I forgot. SpongeBob AI rap. And I'm gonna, if I find it, I'm gonna post it in the chat so you guys can find it. No, his name is... Okay, Kitty, you were close. The channel's name is Glorb. It's not Gooby. <laughs> <laughs> but it fucking might as well be, I guess. I. Listen, I don't know. Glory Glooby, same thing. Yeah, maybe that's just, I'm posting like... the link in the chat. Maybe it's his, like, porno name. His name is Gooby. <laughs> that's not a good porno name. Hi, this is Gooby, and I'm here on OnlyFans. I'm a goofy goober! Rock! Okay, what the hell? Like, girls are just, like, in the room, and they're like, Ooh, I hope I get to see Gooby. And it's like, what the hell are you talking about? What the shit? They're just sitting on that porn couch? You know the one. No. Y yes, you do. Yeah, it's all Pornhub. Ah, oh, we, 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 shit. We all know, we've all seen the porn couch. Where's... Where did I put my phone? Oh. You, you over there dropping beads. You know why he's dropping beads, chat? Because he knows of the porn couch. <laughs> <laughs> the black couch. Yes, thank you, Netro. Ah, oh, anyway. bitch. <laughs> How do you smoke hydro? Aha! Uh -huh. There you are. I think I think the line means that he smokes hydro because he's a squid. Wait, he's underwater. That? Okay. Okay, I gotta turn this Sandy's off. Broken. Sandy the squirrel. Yes, because Sandy needs to have a thick dumpy. She doesn't have a dumpy though. Oh, like I remember seeing one of her the cheeks videos. are sandy. That's all they are. I remember seeing, like, one video, and it was the same one with the Ramadan, like, just, uh, fucking Sandy just, like, twerking, like, and she had, like, the biggest, like, dumpy, I'm like, that I don't- That's some Rule 34 shit! He <laughs> does it's in the short, man! It's- here. They don't call her cheeks for nothing. Alright, we're gonna talk about something else. Yeah, let's change the subject. <laughs> and no, uh, don't guys... change the subject. Go ahead. Did you guys see that? Um, 
that um that the the incredibly hilarious and famous YouTuber Wolfhead Brony got EP on Golden Stream the other day. EP. EP. He EP Sinibi in order to see me. Okay, because of you, I'm never saying EP again. <laughs> listen, and I, I love to... saying EP. No, listen, I had to deal with like the the the, the mayor is EP video, like no matter. Yeah, what I it remember does. that. Yeah, I think uh, so Rustic posted my... that. Yeah, he fucking keeps playing that shit, and I'm like, can you not? Can you not? Like, all I want to do is, like, live and survive and not hear EBs to Nebies of your heebie-jeebies. <laughs> Rustic is my favorite person. <laughs> He's my favorite. He's I'm something. going to bed. I'm going to bed. Chat, I'm going to be late to work tomorrow. Be Golden late. Make all the money. Sort bees. Yeah, and by the way, you made the decision to stay up. I told you to go to bed. Alright, let's, let's, I love democracy. Who's, I'm putting a poll up. Anakin, our allegiance is to the Republic, to democracy! Oh, have you ever seen a YouTube channel called Vampire Robot? Uh... That sounds like a YouTube name. Well, it's a YouTube channel I'm subscribed to, so they'll take, like, whether it be, like, stock footage or home movies or, like, uh, stock footage from, um news networks and he'll put them up there and they are from like the early 2000s the 70s the 90s the 80s and it's really cool to like look back in time okay so it's just something that's interesting i'll post it here and then i'll post it here if people are interested yes that is a a lemon i wonder if i can actually do this a shopping cart Right. Well, Fed, you said you were going to head off. Yeah, I'm creating a poll, and then I'm going to leave. What the fuck you do? Okay, here we go. Blue light special. Oh, my God. You son of a bitch. All right, good night, everybody. Bye-bye. Well, now I don't even remember what the previous, like, choices were. Golden's, Golden's, well, you know. God uh, damn it, Wolfhead. So well, now I got to make a so new much. poll. I gotta make a new okay, poll for this stuff. I'm voting. No. I just voted. <laughs> you motherfucker. I am that fucker. Pussy doe, where my hat is. San Antonio, bad day. Ramadan. God damn it, there goes another one. Oh, it's okay. I, I, I dropped my balls too. Now, where did it go? Uh, uh. So, so I, I need to understand why are we separating beads? What, what, what's the purpose? So when I got these, hang on a second, let me get this over here. So when I got one of those buckets, literally the entire batch was all shuffled colors. I was like, what? Do I just pick a random color to make a bead or a thing? No. So I had to spend the time to actually separate all of that. And it was taking me forever. I had this for like over a year. So, okay. What are you doing with these beads is my question. I'm going to make stuff out of them. Okay, what kind of... Curious. Uh, sprites. Based on old video games. Like, I've seen other people do them before. Uh. Yeah. Probably going to be the longest stream of me doing these. You know what? It's part of going out with a bang, so... I, or what, are you quitting streaming? No! Well, you said go out with a bang, so I, I did not contact. No, I'm just... I'm actually sorting all the colored beads tonight. Oh. Yeah. I am going to have to make a bathroom break, though. Mother Nature's been calling me for a very long time. Do I have that beer? All right, well, I'm going to dip out myself because I have to be in possibly in the morning. I don't want to keep closing, but I might have to.
All right. Well, I'll talk right. to you then. All right. Bye. Bye, chat. Bye, everybody. Bye. All right. Later. <laughs> Meanwhile, I have to BRB, so I'll make it quick. Okay, I'm back. All right. Sorry to keep you all waiting. Who's I to... I don't watch wrestling all that much, so I wouldn't know. Uh, and I'm being tagged once again. Every time... It's like every time I go to... Um... Who tagged me here? Okay, so it was Kitty. Every time I go to stream, I'm suddenly tagged somewhere. And then I gotta stop what I'm doing and take a look at that while I'm trying to, like, chat with you guys. Yeah, so welcome back. Uh... Back to what I was doing... Um, just for the sake of filling in the void, uh, feel free to ask me any questions if you guys have anything. Meanwhile, I'm separating the blues. Got sky blue, it's, uh, dark blue, light blue. Let's see where else to look. I'm almost done with this one. Ooh, all right. So this is, I think, a part of that one. So there's two different shades of blue. One of them I think is a little darker. Yep, I got that right. And I'm going to use the tweezers on this one. There we go. Okay, now, there's very dark blue and there's very light blue. Let's get this in there too. And, okay, that did not help. Now one of the... Son of a bitch, where did it go? Damn it. Uh, hi, Shuka. One of the beads flew across the desk. Damn it. Let's see. Um, has anyone seen D&D &D Honor Among Thieves a year ago? No. Um, Dungeons and Dragons was never my thing. I know that there's an audience for that. I got a, several friends who were into D&D. &D. All right, fuck it. Let's just continue. Probably gonna go here. Um, I thought you were heading to bed, Orca. But yeah, I thought that too. Get your ass to bed. Okay. Um. I have, and I love that movie. Okay. I'm laying in bed and can't sleep. Oof. Josh Gorcher and Ari, I mean. Um, I brought some movie. Hadre is the best minor character. Jonathan? Uh, okay. There we go. And in that goes. And that goes, uh, that goes over here. Uh, one of the things that I learned about uh, when it comes to trying to sleep is that you open the bedroom d window open and you start to feel really, really cold. And when you start to feel really, really cold, it makes you want to um, tuck yourself up in blankets so that way you're much more comfortable. Because that's the thing. Comfort is one of the biggest things that helps you sleep. And to identify what it is that makes you need to feel comfortable is working with... Very commonly, I notice that it's with the temperatures. So when it comes to trying to get a good night's sleep, yeah, you have to, feel, you have to get really, really cold. Because if otherwise it's too hot, it's like, ugh. Can't really do that since it's supposed to do rain in a bit there. I mean... Unless it damages your windowsill, I don't see too big of a problem there. <sighs> I can't have my bedroom window open. I refuse, even during the summer. I don't want insects coming into my small bedroom. Yeah, uh, that, well, that's why there are screens. I'm not even going to continue arguing with that one. I'm probably just... I think I just pissed some people off saying that. Damn it. 
But you basically, you had to make yourself cold. That's why I uh, like, pardon me for being a little TMI. That's why whenever I sleep, I sleep in the nude. Like I take off my clothes. I get hot way too easily. Get off. They don't have screen uh, for our types of windows. Well, that's pretty silly. I don't know why they would not allow that. I don't know what they're trying to gain from that. I'm almost done with this batch. I'm going to move on to the other color. How many colors are left, anyway? I have purple, pink. So I have about three more left. Move this all the way over there. This all the way over there. Yeah, I have about three more left to go through. And something tells me this is going to be quite a night. Oh, dude. Well, I do sleep uh, in my underwear. And yes, it is gross for me to say that. I mean, in the summertime, I do sleep in underwear. In case anything, like, crawls in, you know? Which is kind of gross. Nope. I did not mean for that to happen. There. Shame that I am an AC person. I mean, you can't cool your, like, make yourself cold with an AC. You just have to deal with a heavy bill. Can't do that for specific reasons because of certain times during the month. I just sleep with the fan in my face. I heard somewhere that sleeping with a fan is somewhat of a problem. I'm taking that with a grain of salt. My room is also the hottest room in our house, and we don't know why. Uh, it could be a ventilation problem. It could be that. Also, is your room where the uh, the computer is? Because that's another thing. The um, the computer, like if you use a computer, it unleashes a lot of heat, even with the cooling system. We looked at it and no, it is. Uh, it isn't. Also, uh, like this, even when it used to be the master bedroom. Hmm. Let's get that in here. Let's get that in here. And which one does this go to? I think that's that one. My room is too small for my PC. All right. Because this is the first time I've heard about a fan in your face that cause problems. Um, it's that channel I watch. Um, I think it's called a Brew. It was a story where a guy had a fan to his face and something happened to him. This method again. There. 
Let's go ahead and put this here. Grab a couple of these ones. There we go. Group it all together. There we go. I know when I go to visit Nick next fall, he said, expect it to be very hot while visiting him, mainly because Virginia gets really hot and humid, I guess. Ugh. Well... That's the thing. I've noticed that heat has become more and more of an enemy to me. And sure enough, it's probably become an enemy to you, too. <clears throat> oh, dang, because it matters how, hot, uh, how big the fan is. Mine is pretty small. Um, yeah, I would just recommend watching Bruce's channel to get information about what caused the issue because I haven't watched it yet. But taking it with a pinch of salt, I decided, you know, for my own safety issues is to not use the, um, not use the fan in the middle of the night. Uh, warm weather compared to a winter, oddly. Well, uh, at that point, I'm not sure what to tell you. I guess just, like, wear less clothes when you're in bed. Or use less blankets. Like, I'm not going to say sleep in the nude, because that's a personal preference. I'm more of a winter person. Well, not even a winter person. I like um, autumn. That's my favorite time of the year. Christmas, I think, is a little overrated. Summertime is over, way too overhyped and just miserable. I have a light blanket that I use. Okay. Ooh, I think that was a little too much. I'm more of a summer person. All right. Is that easy to tell apart here? Yes, it is. And... Whoa. I live for Halloween. And that's... um That and sometimes I'm able to wear tank tops and shorts in bed. Okay. <clears throat> I don't know why my voice is getting all raspy. I'm going to get through all this tonight. <laughs> um, let's put that there. Put that there. Well, speaking of rooms and beds, I should get to mine. Have a good night and laters. All right. You have a good rest. Well, God damn it. One just dropped. I think that's it. Yeah. Okay, good. that goes there these go here hope you found it yeah I found it I found it These ones, yeah, I'm almost done with the blues. I think this goes there. Let's put this over here, and let's 
get some here. Also, I love the different shades on blue. It's my favorite color. Gee, I haven't noticed from the Orca Pone. I will say the little emoji of your OC is pretty cute. Oh, wait, that's, uh, that's a different shade of blue right there. Ron Tweezers, where are the other ones? I've been to theme parks uh, before. Huh. The one theme park I wish I could go to is Universal Studios. Um, I. Th it could be, you know, all over the place, but I know that there's a Universal Studios at um, somewhere down below in my state. Oh my gosh, I want to go to Universal Studios. Because they made a Mari themed area and soon we'll get DK. My favorite color is red and black. <sighs> My favorite color is red. But mostly hot colors. <laughs> hot headed. <laughs> That's all making sense. That can go over there. This is here. Um, yep. Yep. Let's put you there, put you there. Yeah, all this goes into this bowl. You could probably guess my favorite color on the first try. I don't know, Blue Griffin. Um, is it turquoise? And yes, that was sarcasm. Okay, and that taken care of, that taken care of, that taken care of, that taken care of. I'm gonna kill myself for asking this, but has anyone seen the movie Food Fight? I've only seen the Nostalgia Critic review of it, and yeah, it is an ugly-ass movie. I am on culture, just ask Golden. Eh. Not everybody's seen everything. Uh, some people I know of haven't seen Die Hard yet, and I'm like, we gotta fix that. All right, let's get this badge done and over with. Uh, there's one more of this color, and all right, good. Don't watch it; it's god awful. That does not surprise me. Like every when I think about the movie Food Fight, some people argue that it's one of those examples that are worse than the movies that I personally hate. And while there are some arguably worse movies out there, like, there is not going to be, like, a worst movie ever made, period. There's always going to be, you know, it's that saying, you know, there's always a bigger fish. There's always a worse movie out there. But my most hated movie is always going to be uh, Chicken Little for ruining the Disney canon and being the cap off of completely obliterating 2D animation, even with The Princess and the Frog. Um... It is. I need to watch not only Die Hard, Iron Giant, and Terminator. For some reason, for some reason, the Iron Giant is not on Max. And I don't know why. Uh, movie lover. Okay, uh, Shuka, have you seen Evil Dead 2? Because if not, we will fix that.
Yeah, I'm almost done with this. And then that goes with that one. Yes, yeah, so that goes there, that goes there. These two go over here. This goes here. Channel is a bad movie, but how does it ruin the Disney canon? Because it completely like it was supposed to be a consistent line of hand drawn animation compared to like other parts of the canon that include like other um, portions of animation, like some were uh, stop motion, some of them were like a fusion of live action and um, live action and animation. But no, the, now they mix CG uh, CG animated movies. With hand-drawn animated movies, and they didn't bother to make a separate canon of that. It was also the indication that hand-drawn animation is being left in the dust because CGI was the next hot thing. But aside from, you know, doing that, it tried to be Shrek. It tried to be funny by being hit with the audiences with pop culture references, and it did such a poor job doing that. Like, it doesn't even have a story. Like, the first half deals with Chicken trying to redeem himself... After an incident he had by mistaking the sky for like, mistaking a stop sign for something like that, for a piece of a sky falling. And then he's trying to get himself loved again. And then he goes back to score one when aliens arrive. So it's like, that entire segment right there was useless. It's like, the writers did not know what they were doing. It has no direction. Have you played Jackbox and Gaming Free? Yes, I have. I actually did a stream of that years ago and made a whole highlight reel based on it. Makes you wonder that Disney was doing something and they did it poorly. Yeah. No, I can easily tell that from a mile away. Because Shrek was such a popular movie. Like, the thing is, DreamWorks did not expect Shrek to be such a big thing. In fact, during production of that film, they called it the Shrek Basement for uh, developers who were sent there and didn't want to go there because they didn't want to work on Shrek or something like that. Um, I know that during the making, Chris Fairley was going to voice Shrek until they got Mike Myers. Because Chris passed away of uh, some kind of drug overdose. I'm almost out of this one. And... Alright, so... This goes over here. And these go over here. I'm looking over this one. All right. Well, looks like I am done with the blues. Gotta get them all together. This one goes with this one. And this one goes over here. And this one. Every year I want to watch a new horror movie the entire month of October. So Evil Dead is on the list. So Golden, we need a movie night. Um, the most I recommend is just Evil Dead 2. Evil Dead 1, it has its own classic of being, you know, low-budget horror movies. But you're not missing out as much compared to uh, Evil Dead 2, which has a lot more energy put into it. Let's go ahead and just squeeze more air out of this one so that way... This room. I do not watch horror movies. It gives me nightmares. Um, I tried to steer away from horror movies when I was younger because I didn't want to risk getting any nightmares. I used to get scared easily. But um, as I grew older, the biggest thing that like I fear the most... Is something involving, you know, things with my body. You know, if I get a certain disease or something. Or body horror is what some people would call it. And that's really horrifying me. Because so there, there's something going on inside your body. And you can't do anything about it. Um, 
And that's also why whenever it came to the Alien franchise, the thing that always terrified me more were the face huggers because they put an egg inside your chest and it burst out like you have a really bad stomach ache. And it's like, yeah, I don't like stomach aches. All right. Oh, we will become great friends. I don't trust library movies, and also horror movies don't give me nightmares, surprisingly. Well, no shit! Surprise the horror fan over there. Aliens bursting out of your belly, the Spaceballs edition. Yeah, no, I remember that. My favorite franchise is Tremors, for sure. Huh. I expected you would have been a bigger fan of Chucky or something. Alright. Time to make a new poll because Wolfhead decided to ruin the other one. Uh, poll, poll. Here we go. New poll. Next color, so I have yellow and orange, red and pink. And all right, let's kick things off. Let's see what we have. Cast your votes, guys. Cast your votes. Not really, because the remake of Child's Play ruined the entire franchise, being a favorite of mine. Wow, uh, you could just, you know, pick your own. Well, not, not pick your own, but you could just, like, completely scrap that. I think that's kind of... No offense, Shuka, that is kind of silly. You could just watch the originals, or just watch the first. That's like saying... That's like saying the Alien franchise ruined it for me because of Alien Resurrection or Alien 3. Like, Alien 3 was a huge, like, a huge dunk on the second movie. Because it completely invalidates everything it did. I'm actually kind of glad I haven't watched that one. I just prefer the first two. It's kind of like with Terminator. Terminator 2 is easily one of my favorite movies of all time, but Terminator 3 just ruined it by letting the war happen, which, ironically enough, that's what everybody else likes about it, because, oh, they had the balls to do that. It's like, okay, so that just made all the effort in the third, like, in the second, like, last act of the second movie worthless. I would quote the... What would Chucky say, Kuba? You're, you're now in the spotlight. Because, like, in the in the end of Terminator 2, the T-800 literally sacrifices itself to prevent the war from happening. Oh, no, you only postponed it. So that was actually kind of fruitless. And all the emotional weight behind it is now completely out the window. All right, purple is the winner. Followed by red and pink and yellow and orange. All right. Purple it is. This doesn't look too big. I have a date with a six-year-old boy. Okay, yeah, I can see why that's pretty gross. I'm not going to block you for it, though. All right. God damn it. No. God double damn it. Son of a bitch. Get in there. You know what? I'm just going to put this here. There. Toss that over there. Yep. 
I love Chucky TV series. They did um, what they did, that they did beautifully. All right, let's separate all these. The slightly pink one, this light lavender sort of color. I think that's what both of these two are. Yeah, they are. So I guess there's only three variations here. Let's put it in this. There. Also, Friday the 13th and Nightmare on Elm Street are also good movies. Oh, yeah, no, those are always uh, cult classics. My favorite scene is always when, um, what's her name? Uh, not, I don't think it's Nancy, but one of the characters gets, oh, there's a leftover blue bead. I'm going to have to find a place for that. What do you know? It's right there at the top of the jar. All right, back to where it was. Nancy, I think. But, uh, it was the first victim where she got ripped apart and she was floating towards the ceiling. It was a very, very impressive scene. I don't think it was Nancy. Nancy's the main character. Tina, that's who it was. Now I remember. Her chest was cut open and then she was floating above, like in the midair above the mattress. And then she got like dragged to the like corner, uh, dragged to the ceiling. Yeah. It was Tina. Tina! In the chat, we're going to watch Golden Fox Sword, not the Purple Beats, a.k.a. the nickname the Keyframe calls it. Purple? Something's floating over my head. You're going to have to explain better context, Kuba. So, here, here. Shit. Let's put you over here. Let's put you here. Have you seen Ernest Scared Stupid? No, I saw portions of it, though. The weird thing about the Ernest movies is that I haven't had the chance to watch it, but I did admire the silly personality that Jim Varney was um, bringing out. That guy left the world too soon. Keyframe says the Urples go. Oh, the Urples. Okay. Urples. Urples. I'm going to go ahead and text that to Key. Just for shits and giggles. Where are you? There we go. There. Okay, next year, Babs Khan will bring my laptop so I can watch it. It's hilarious. Uh, maybe. Um, it, whenever I do go to Babs Khan next year, I am going to be very, very busy. So I don't know if I'll have the time. We could still do like a movie night during Halloween. Shit. I put that in the wrong spot. Maybe it's just me, but... Halloween has become more and more my favorite holiday, even over Christmas. I know that's a little unusual, but there's something joyful about Halloween where kids are, like, dressed in different costumes, and they're very creative with it. Like, obviously, there's some store-bought ones, but there are times I remember when I was a kid when I would be creative and make my own uh, costumes and, like, go out dressed up and all that shit. 
Maybe that's just me. They did the mash. It was the monster mash. The monster mash. It was a graveyard smash. I remember one point when I was driving to my parents' house to like pass the candy around. Because in my apartment, um, there's no uh, like Halloween activity. Which honestly kind of sucks. Let's see. Okay. Okay, that sounds um, good, too. And yeah, same here. If I would leave Halloween decorations up all year round, work at Spirit Halloween next year round, and have my Halloween tree up here. Do you have a Halloween tree? Do you believe in, like, the Great Pumpkin or something, Shuka? That's a little unusual. Oh. Whoops. That goes there. I remember that as I was getting older, I was in high school and I was like, I'm too old to trick or treat. But I remember going around, keeping an eye on kids, you know, making sure that, you know, they behave well and everything. And like, I still have that, um, like I have that like sense of excitement, but just like feeling happy for the kids. You know, we go to every, like, every uh, neighbor and such. And I remember at one point I stumbled upon a house where somebody really, like, got, um, like, passionate about it. That somebody made a terrifying voice as we approached the entrance. It's like, whoa, even that, like, even I had the chills from hearing that. I will send a pic later if I can of it to you. I am totally an October baby being born on the 13th of October. You know what? I remember you saying that. That's pretty cool. Uh, 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 there we go. I didn't realize how short of an assortment of purples there are. Or purples. That's what I would say. Um, yeah. Hang on. I can't believe you know that reference. Hmm. And you had a Halloween tree? Are you related to Man Shroud? I don't even know what that is. I do remember the uh, robot chicken skit where, um, what's his name? Linus made the, uh, <laughs> he literally made a pentagram to summon the uh, great pumpkin, which I thought was fucking, like, funny as shit. Then again, Robot Chicken just knows how to just make some good laughs. Ah! Nope, that goes over here. That's more of a pinkish sort of color. I guess it was more like a light purple. That's just me. That's a darker purple. This can go over here. There we go. May not look like it, according to how the camera is like picking up on it. No, and yeah, October thirteenth is pretty cool to be born on, especially Friday the thirteenth. Of movies being a joke before school friends until I actually watch them being in high school. Um, I will say that at one point I did have a marathon of watching, you know, the many iconic uh, horror movies, especially the slasher films. Um, at one point, because. Uh, Paleo and Saber, when when their channels were smaller, they were doing marathons of them, and I was anticipating to them. <laughs> um, I remember when I anticipated to Evil Dead, uh, pretty much the whole trilogy of Evil Dead, 1, 2, and um, what is it called? Army of Darkness. And um, what was it? The, uh, the Nightmare on Elm Street and such. And I watched Halloween and everything. And I actually did a short vlog series before I decided to remove them afterwards. Because I was having such an experience of watching the movies that, oh, these movies will give you nightmares. But they're iconic films and 
I had such a good time just finally getting to experience it for the first time. That's how I got into, uh, that's how, uh, I got to watch, uh, Evil Dead 2 when it was, uh, I think it was available on Netflix at the time. Snake isn't a huge fan of horror movies, but he said he will watch them with me anyways, which is sweet of him. But I said he doesn't need to if he doesn't like them. I mean, that's fair. That's each of their own. Some people are not into horror movies. Some people are not into animation. Some people are not into, you know, everybody's different preferences. It's what makes us people. Uh, and there we go. Good. Whoa, 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 careful. I'm not a horror fan, but I did watch a few of them. I like the Scream trilogy. Yeah, I did watch them. I didn't like any of them for a different reason. It definitely hurts my hand going through all this shit. I'm going to have to get used to that whenever I work on these Perler Bead projects. All right, and there we go. Oh, wait, 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 wait. This is the normal one. That goes in there, that goes in there. These go over here. And yeah, that one too, that one too. This one, and this one, these, over here, over here. Let's get that off. Shit. <clears throat> come on, come on. Let's see. Uh, let's see, my mom just doesn't understand why I like horror movies, and neither does my dad. They always keep laughing, asking, I don't know why she likes horror movies, and I don't know where she gets it from, when my dad is the one who keeps getting these horror movies for me. <laughs> Shuka's parents, I don't know why my daughter likes horror movies. Also, Shuka's parents, buys them horror, buys her horror movies. <laughs> um... I haven't seen Ghostface. Um, I've only watched the first two Scream movies, so I don't have much of a consensus on the franchise as a whole. Shit. And... Go. Um. Let's see, because of Blissey movie reaction to the Halloween tree. I've been wanting to do a cover of the uh, Monster Mash at one point. And I know who to find to do a cover of that song. I haven't spoken to her in a while. I'm sure she'd be down for it. What was her name? Moonlight's Midnight Sonata. It's a Thespia's wife. She's a huge fan of horror Halloween. I don't know. I like the thrills, I guess, of scary movies, even though they don't scare me unless it's Tim Curry, it movie. That still traumatizes me, and I don't like clown movies in general. They just freak me out. Oh, yeah, Monster Mash. Honestly, there needs to be more, like, Halloween-based songs. Like, I can name a few, like... Like, I could use the A Nightmare Before Christmas soundtrack as a start, and the other being Monster Mash. 
uh, Spooky Scary Skeletons, which I think it was, feel free to correct me, I think it was written in the early 1900s. Spooky Scary Skeletons and Shivers Down Your Spine. Damn it! No, that does that goes over here. And the rest of that goes there. Oh, I'm almost done with this batch. Yes, we need more. There was also Thrill. Cause this is Thriller! Thriller Night! Whereas, like, Christmas songs, there's, like, too many to name off of. In fact, one of the songs was originally supposed to be a Thanksgiving song, and it turned into a Christmas song. And that was uh, Jingle Bells. It was just called One or Soap and Slay. Boy, that seemed to have aged like Paul, like, age like milk. When you say things like snow, stuff like that, of course people are going to identify Christmas with that. Like, Thanksgiving is an autumn holiday. But at the same time, Thanksgiving is an American holiday, so I guess I wasn't going to take off too well. Oh, no, this is such a riot. Um, I still haven't seen the old It. I have seen 2017's It, and I fucking loved it. It was just the way it was executed, and Bill, um, pardon me for butchering his name, like Sasgard or something like that, he nailed the role playing as uh, Pennywise. Like, it just, I just felt it. When I worked at Hall um, worked at Spirit Halloween, didn't play much Halloween songs, maybe a few Halloween songs, then the others were pop and K-pop, stupidly enough. Well, I mean, that's just mostly the sheer fact that popular music is going to be played to, uh, like, resonate with the customers. Because they're more identified with that than, you know, getting into the actual spirit of whatever holiday is going on. Nothing much else we can do about it. Nope, this is too light. This goes over here. Let's see, go watch it. It's pretty fun to watch. Oh, I'm sure it is. I'll have to find the stream service for it. I know that it's a three-hour film, so that's definitely going to be uh, a thing to do at some point. Oh, there we go. There we go. I may actually try to watch Tim Curry's mo uh, Cures It... Uh, movie this year to get over my trauma if others would watch it with me. Maybe. We can make that a goal this coming Halloween. Because that's the other thing about Halloween. You're, you're, you're facing your fears. God damn it. Here. Get over here. Wait, 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 wait. There we go. And... All right, Blue Griffin, have a good night. Yes, it is a mini series. Okay, yeah. I definitely have to look into that. But the uh, the 2017 movie was very well done. And I'm one of the few who still enjoyed watching It Chapter 2, despite how problematic it was. Like, a part of me, like, the problem that I had is that Occasionally, they had, like, flashback scenes with the kids, and I'm like, isn't the whole point of Chapter 2 supposed to just focus on the grown-ups? Because they were just, they, like, fleshed out them, uh, the characters as kids before? Oh, 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 oh. There we go, and... That, da, da, da. No. After two, and I saw the that one scene that scared the ever living crap out of me. Was it the naked lady? Because even I was like uncomfortable with that. It's like, oh, dude, come on, put your fucking clothes on. I mean, anger Joe kind of said it best. He's like, oh, dude, what, what lady? What are you doing? Put your clothes on.
yes, it was the naked lady. Yeah. I remember when I saw that in the theaters. I'm like, oh, dear God. It was so gross. Like, I'm not even going to get into too much specifics. Because it's like... Uh, like, I would get in so much trouble on how I would word things. I think the reason why most people don't like the second one is because the first one ended with them beating um, the snot out of the clown. Then the second one ended with uh, him calling him names. Something that surprises me is that they're making a fucking Bambi horror movie when Bambi is in public domain yet, I think, right? I mean, it kind of is now. Because, aside from the Disney movie, uh, Bambi was based on a book by Felix Salton in 1923. And it's 2024, so that's 101 years. I think that's more than public domain at that point. Um, but on the contrary... I remember hearing that, you know, when Disney was remaking Bambi and they were going to, like, take out the scene where Bambi's mother got killed, I was, like, I was just not okay with that. It's like, it's, oh, it's traumatizing to the kids. It's supposed to do that. That was the whole point. It was supposed to show, as part of nature, death will happen. And in some way, shape, or form, there's nothing much else you can do about it. And people are just, nowadays, a lot of them are too sheltered. They need to get out of their shell. I did hear recently that they canceled the movie, and I'm just like, good? We never really asked for a live-action Bambi to begin with. And I also heard that the uh, Lilo and Stitch movie was canceled, which, also good. We never asked for it, you know? I could go on a tirade about Disney remaking their fucking products, and obviously it's not going to get anywhere. You guys have already heard the same song and dance, so I don't want to bore you guys to tears with it. That scene where Bambi is crying for his mother still makes me cry to this day. Yeah, it's a very haunting scene. Um, and I even like the Disney sequel, where it picks up right where it last left off, where Bambi's mother was killed. And uh, he stumbled upon his, uh, his father, who was the great prince of the forest. God damn it. And that there was a lot of development between those two. I think that was kind of a missing part of the original Bambi story. Because even though you could piece together that uh, the Great Prince raised Bambi. Like you can kind of piece it together in your head. Uh, I think it had a nice natural connection between watching you know, Bambi's young uh, childhood to adulthood. You know, I think. Oh, thank God. I'd rather stick with the original animation of Lilo and Stitch and its sequels, minus Stitch has a glitch. I... The thing with this, uh, like, Lilo and Stitch movies is that I was just fine with the uh, the original. Like, I saw that there was a series, and I saw that there was Stitch the movie. And then there was, like, Stitch 2, Stitch has a glitch. It's like, uh, okay, so which one's the real sequel? You know, it's, it's a whole garbled mess. Like, was any of this necessary? Like, good God. Like, obviously, Stitch the movie was there to set up this t like TV series for the other experiments. Like, I, I guess you could say that, but you could also still make just the TV series and not make, just make, you know, Stitch the movie. I just think that was a weird marketing strategy. Because he is Experiment 626, which, to an extent, like, okay, what are the other experiments, you know? I mean, that's just a question of curiosity. I don't... and Like, you could make a TV series out of that. You know, there was a TV series of Aladdin, and that was a really well-done series. Um, then there was Leroy and Stitch. I think Leroy and, Leroy and Stitch was the... Um, was the last entry of... It was supposed to be the series finale. And even then, like, when I saw Leroy and Stitch that was on the Disney Channel, I was like, what the hell was this movie trying to be? And then I found it afterwards. Oh, it's the series finale. Because there's like so many different titles out there. It's just, it's ridiculous to keep track of. Like, it's not on the levels of The Land Before Time where they made like 10 plus sequels. I mean, that was just fucking ridiculous. Like, I didn't even like the second Land Before Time movie. Because they started making it a musical. And I'm just like, why? Let's see. 
Disney should have stuck with Lilo and Stitch being kind of similar to Aladdin, make a movie, make a sequel, make a TV series follow-up, make a sequel to wrap it up. I mean, they kind of did. Stitch the movie was the pilot to the Lilo and Stitch TV series. Somewhere between there was Stitch as a glitch, and Leroy and Stitch was supposed to be the series finale. They even had an anime of Lilo and Stitch where Leo, Lilo was an adult. That I did not know about. I'd be curious to see how she was drawn. Uh, nope, nope, nope. This goes over here. All right, and just a little bit more. Hang on. And... All right, the purples are now done. So, I think that's this one. Uh, I think that's this one. And was it this one? No. This is one of the pink ones. Ah, there you are. Whew. Getting so close. So there's two more. The pink and the orange, or the red and the orange. And the red one is next. I remember hearing somewhere that the Powerpuff Girls had an anime and it was terrible. I know that it had a reboot back in 2016 and oh boy, I heard a lot about that one. I'll send the link later tomorrow after work. All right. goes in there it was terrible <laughs> Golo Fox is now done with the purple bowl you don't need to be sorry uh, Kuba it's fine uh, did you have a favorite blissy magic lesson mine is the uh, I don't know if this would count as a magic lesson but I did like the one where she um, not she in particular but the um, it's the one where the bread monster comes back and uh, Twink takes on it. You know, it's a classic uh, monster mash. Um, the big monster flick. And she captured that magic between uh, both uh, the bread monster and Twink. That one was my favorite from her. I don't know if that was considered a favorite magic lesson. Uh, for my favorite magic lesson, there's still a little bit more of the entries that I have to watch. I haven't watched the Josh Scorcher one. Um, I've heard a lot about that one. Um... And by saying that, Blizz is probably going to be, like, furious at me for that. But, uh... The Magiswords. Oh, the one with, um... Not Jasper. Yeah, it, it was it was the quote-unquote Jasper Pie one, but it was uh, his brother. That one was hilarious. I'm not going to lie about that. That one was fun. Uh, yeah, this was the next one. Yeah, the red and pink was the next one. Remember, I love that one. Um, like, normally, like, some of you would expect me to say, like, I like the um, the one that I was in, but that would have been too narcissistic of me. I am proud of it, though. Let's see. I'm all honestly excited for Biops Gun Nives here because it's good to see you uh, and make some great memories with you. And also, Crimson told me that he told you, you, and I quote, um, I won't tell Shuka if you don't um, about the closing ceremonies. Um... I did watch the closing ceremonies. Uh, that's because Keyframe was there and the vendor hall was closed. I'm going to go ahead and just put this here. There's probably going to be more on this one. This one's probably going to take me a bit. Oh, hello. This one fell over here. Uh. Casper Cake is not Jasper's brother. He's an evil doppelganger accidentally created by Thunder Blight. Uh, okay. My mistake. But yeah, that one was pretty funny. Yeah, I have a feeling this is going to be a really big one. Um, damn it. I didn't mean it to watch some more Mighty Magic Swords. I don't know if that's on, um, like, on Max or not. Like, I don't know if that was made by Cartoon Network. I'll have to look into that. Uh, the pure red one over there. Oh, this is going to be a lot to sort out. Yes, Casper Cake. <sighs> I'm 
My very, very magic lesson was the one with the inverted shadow. That one was pretty funny. Uh, inverted shadow did a lot of, like, put in a lot of effort to make that work. Are these the same colors? Yes, they are. Oh. Because over here, this because over here. There's a lot to sort on this one. Holy shit! My favorite one. Let's see. He was really nice to meet as well uh, last year at Babs. Yeah. Um, you talking about Inverted Shadow or uh, Crimson? Um, what was the name? Yeah, I'll just say Crimson for short. This this one goes over here. Get up there. Uh, that's a red one. I could just drop there. And, well, oh, oh, no, no, no. Put those over here. That's a red one. Also a red one. Yeah, okay, so Inverted Shadow. So, I did meet Inverted Shadow when I was um, at Thespio's wedding. And I think I met him at... Uh, Bronycon at 2017. He was a chill dude to talk to. The sad thing is I kept forgetting his name. I was like, fuck, man. There were so many people to look around and I kept forgetting him. Kind of felt like an asshole. Let's drop that over here. And, uh... You know what? I'm just going to use this to separate them. Just another dump here. It's light one. Light one. goes over here. Yeah, these are the dark dark ones here. Oh. I'm not just remembering uh, the opening to Mighty Magic Swords. Hang on, does it go with this one? Yeah, I think it does. Yeah, because these ones are darker. can go right here. These orange ones can go here. I think that's what these are. These are orange ones. Well, slightly. You guys have any other questions? Feel free to ask. Oh, I'm excited because by next April for BabsCon, I'll have my updated plushie for my OC with their new design. I see that a lot of people have plushies of their OCs. And I, for some reason, I never had a plushie of my own. Like, is it kind of traditional to have a plushie of their own? Okay, this is a lighter one. Like, I don't know how much of a requirement there is for that. Um... That can go there. Come on. 
That can go over there. This can go here. My friend who is vendoring with me next year uh, made mine. I can ask her about how much it would be to make one for you and Key. I'll bet it would be very, very expensive. I know that uh, Bliss has worked with um, a popular uh, plushie designer. And yes, they're going to be very like pricey, but that's because it costs a lot of money to make them with the materials that they had to acquire. And not to mention the amount of patience it has to make a plushie, especially a custom one. Anyone here remember seeing the first um, Sonic live action movie and we didn't like it in the production? Yeah, no, it's an amazing achievement on... It's really the amazing achievement that it went from what looked like it could have been an absolute disaster to changing things up a bit and making it a much better movie. Um, The plushies I remember that Bliss worked with was the name Kia Shone, and her own plushies, not including Bliss's, was around like four hundred ish dollars. But they were in very good quality. And I think uh, her payment was payments were done through certain payment plans. Like on a monthly basis, you pay a certain amount until it's all paid off. Like that seems like a a fair way of you know having somebody pay for something. These are like scattered everywhere. This goes over here. This goes over here. Uh, this red one goes there. Put that here. This goes here. This goes over here. <clears throat> um, I'm not sure if I have Shuka. You'll probably have to show me that. Um, but I remember when, you know, there was the ugly Sonic and a lot of us were not very happy, so they went and changed it. Um... I was very cool of them to actually listen to us and actually make the change. Um, the thing that's hilarious is that people are still wondering what the original, what the movie would have looked like if they kept the original, um, the original Sonic design. I'm still morbidly curious about that. And I know that Disney made a joke about that and got the rights from Paramount of the Chip and Dale movie. Oof. Shit. Oh, yeah, that's right. I put that over there. Let's see. See, I am. I have a question. Do you know the what? I swear, if that line is said somewhere in the movie, I am going to not the movie, but the series. I'm going to throw a fit. <laughs> like it's absolutely hilarious, but it's like that just shows that Paramount and Sega are kissing a little too much ass. And I'm being DM'd. Ah, I see. Was this plushie made before you made your entire OC uh, an orca? I'm guessing it isn't. And maybe you'll probably just like ask for an update or something. Actually, looking at it again... It doesn't look too shabby. It looks pretty nice. I can see the eyeshadow and everything. Okay, yeah, so it was from last year. Oh, 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 nope. Don't you get away from me. Yeah, it was from last year. And 
Let's see. And my friend is making her update design right now with her tail and fin and wings. They absolutely, uh, they will both have wire in them to move around. Oh, that's cute. And still more of this to look through. Do you know the, you know what? I was referencing a Knuckles meme, but I'm not going to go any further because I know a certain someone gets triggered by it. I mean, I don't get triggered by it. I just think that it's becoming a little too kiss-ass if, like, that line is made. Like, I'll get the fuck over it. I mean, there's nothing much else that can be done if it's there. But I am looking forward to watching that series. It looks absolutely hilarious. The best thing about the plushies she makes is that they aren't as big. So they don't take up a lot of space, which is great because my space isn't uh, big in my house from the vendor table, especially last year. Hmm. Cool. Uh, let me just. And that's not the right one. That's where it goes. This is a pretty bigger one. All right. Uh, this. Put it over here. Whoops. Don't want that to get loose. What time is your stream tomorrow, by the way? Um, like I've been mentioning before, I don't have an exact time. I mostly aim for the evening time. Because that's when most people come... Ah! Damn it! A bead fell. Ah, there you are. Chris is averted. Anyways. This can go here, this can go here, and uh, and here. Because 6 p.m. to 9 p.m. I'll be in class, but I should be able to join. I mean, it's going to be Final Fantasy VI. Which is a game that, uh, it's like more single player. So I've yet to like work more on that. And that goes over here. Come on. So yeah, okay, give it the ching ching. I'm intrigued at the new, uh, the Knuckles series series because it's about Knuckles finding his place and purpose and his new home, blah, 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 blah. I'm willing to bet you that it's going to end with him having to guard the Master Emerald, which I'm perfectly fine with. That is too, th too rich. Let's put that over there.
I was meaning to ask you, I was wanted to make some ship charms for some friends who have a significant other. I was curious, would you and Keyframe like one? Uh... To tell you the truth, I'm not exactly sure how to answer that. On the one hand, that sounds cute. On the other, I would have to ask Key if she's completely fine with it too. I don't want to just assume, oh yeah, that would, that sounds nice and everything, without the realization that she may have a problem with it too. Because she's also involved in it. So, I don't have a exact answer for it. It sounds cute though, but I'm going to... Um, I'm going to have to think that over. There we go. Where this one's taking a while. These are five beads to sort out. Yikes. Might as well just close that. Okay, yeah, sure. I just wanted to ask. I was going to give them as gifts to you all at BabsCon next year, for those who are going, that is. Um, so I think that goes over here, and this also goes over here. No, 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 no. Two in there. That goes here. Whoop! I saw that drop out of out of my grip. Okay, yeah, they're all the same color, just making sure. Uh, let me know uh, will you, um, what keyframe things, and if not, that's okay. Just wanted to ask before I did anything. Uh, I don't know if you have key in your contact list or not. Because um, I like, there's a lot of things on my mind, so I'm kind of bound to forget certain things. I mean, if let's say you are, would you make two? So that way there'd be one for each of us. Um, no, that's a little too late. There we go. That's where these go. Pink. Uh, that color... God, I barely made a dent in this one. Let's see, but yeah, does it uh, are you doing anything? Oh yeah, that's right. That message is already there. Um I think all of this goes here. Yep. Oh I mean it's not overfilling, but it's like it's still barely a dent. Alright, let's move you here. Let me see if I can find a that bag for the. I think it's this one. Yes, it is. Let's go ahead and just put this in there. Yeah, I'll try to ask her when I have the chance. To
Okay, sorry about that. Big oopsies. That was a brain fart. I hope I don't get disconnected again. Yep. I hate it when it does that. Whoa, 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 these are brighter. It goes over there. There we go. And that one piece here, and that goes there. Let's scoop it up like this. Okay, yeah, maybe that's not the best idea. Still making progress. Ugh. All right, Thunder Kid, have a good night. I'm probably going to head to bed too since I had to prepare for work tomorrow. And all 18 toddlers being inside due to the rain. Good night, Golden. I'll TTYL. Have a good night. And the rest of the stream. All right, later, Shuka. No, come on. Here's a question for you guys, for anybody who's, like, still around in the chat. Are there any uh, movies that you like but everybody else hates? Like, not even as a guilty pleasure, but legit like, but everybody else hates. The movie, The Mean One. The mean one. I don't think I've heard of that one. You'll have to explain it to me. Ooh, my ears. Ooh, ah, ah. Oh, God. I think that's a pimple right there. I hate that. Like, you have an itch somewhere in the back of your ear, and when you least expect it, it's a pimple, and then it hurts like hell. I know TMI, but we've all been there before. I think that's what that is. That goes there. It's rated R horror uh, movie. It's a rated horror. Oh, that. Yeah, I remember hearing about that. I didn't bother with those. Uh, I know that there's uh, Blood and Honey, which got a lot of negative attention. Yeah, apparently not a lot of people liked it, but I loved it so much. All right. Uh, this goes here. That piece goes there. And these two. Let's see. I like Thumbelina. It was a pretty fun film to watch. I like the song, Let Me, uh, Me Be Your Wings. And I did like some of the cast in the film. 
And I get why nobody else liked it. The acting is not good. Some of the subplots are not important. And also, Marry the Fucking Mole. I remember hating that song when I was a kid. Yeah, uh... It had, it had its moments. Like, honestly... I still think that the worst movie that Don Bluth ever made... Still has to go to the Witchroll in Central Park. That movie was just hot dog shit. Like a steaming pile of garbage. And for some reason, like, at least according to Rotten Tomatoes, I added fucking because of my hate of that song. Yeah. So, according to Rotten Tomatoes, and you can take that with a pinch of salt, um, the Pebble and the Penguin has like a 0% of Rotten Tomatoes. But I thought it was just a cute, fun movie. Like, I know for a fact it was not up to par with, like, the other Don Bluth movies. But a 0%? I think that was a little too harsh. Like, if I were to review the movie and give it a rating, I'd say, like, a 2.5. Like, just barely below average. Like, it's a movie that I'll watch, not care too much about. It has its moments, but it's like nothing to blow your skirt off about. Yeah, the Pebble and the Penguin was pretty okay. Um, Anastasia, I still have yet to take a look at. Just haven't had the chance yet. But I heard some good things about it. Um, Titan AE was one of my favorites from uh, Don Bluth. And I think he ended out uh, that movie uh, like with a slightly bigger bang. Like, kind of a bang, because he kind of went to his roots of being, you know, not always kid-friendly or going for something a little more on the edgy side. Um, like, I, I wouldn't necessarily compare to his previous, like, his old, like, much older works. Especially the, um, the Secret of Nim, which I thought was... The Secret of Nim to me is an absolute masterpiece. Like that was his first movie, and I wouldn't say that he was able to capture lightning twice in a bottle, but he was pretty successful in the eighties. But after All Dogs Go to Heaven, the nineties came in, and he he dropped the ball with films like uh, Rockadoodle and uh, a handful of other films. But I think that Titan A.E. definitely stood out somewhat. And I say somewhat because the movie did tank at the box office. Um, Christopher Lloyd as Rasputin was pretty good choice for the... Tr Wait, Christopher Lloyd was Rasputin? I thought he was voiced by... Um, I thought he was voiced by Jim Cummings. And now that song is in my head. <laughs> in the dark of the night, evil will find you. <clears throat> I don't know why my voice is being all raspy again. Probably because I'm wearing it out from all the talking. Ah! Damn it! Wait, wait, wait. There you are. Jim Cumming does a singing voice for Rasputin. Alright, so that's what got me mixed up. Alright. Uh, these two go here. This one's probably going to take me the longest. Jesus. No, you go somewhere else. Come on, get up. Damn it! I fell back in that little tray there. Uh, 
Um, if I had to pick a movie that I like but everybody else hates, um, wow, that was a perfect coincidence, Cuba. Uh, Five Will Goes West, yeah, like that movie, like it's just more of a hot take. I actually like that movie more than the first American Tale because the first American Tale was just brutally depressing, and it was playing into that philosophy that Don Blue said that you can attach anything as long as you put a happy ending to it. I don't agree with him on that. Like, as long as you attach a happy ending. No, because there's some things that are so traumatic that a happy ending would not get their minds off of it. One of the big case in points is with the Lion King when after, like, Mufasa was killed. That was a big traumatic experience. Like, even after, you know, Simba came out on top, it was a big impact to that movie. Or when Bambi's mom got killed. The supposed happy ending on that one was actually kind of bittersweet. Because the forest, even though everybody survives, the film got cowboys in it. Oh, you're talking about the uh, Five of Ghost West movie. But um, even though everybody survived, the forest was like burned down and they had to rebuild life. Which is kind of a bittersweet of an ending. Um, but I don't think that's a justifiable... I don't think it justifies, you know... You could do like put anything in the film as long as you attach a happy ending. I don't agree with that. Because those scenes will still resonate. Another huge case in point, and this is kind of hilarious saying this, is the Transformers movie. When Optimus Prime got killed off early on, kids ran from the theater crying. Even after like after the ending of the film, people remember that scene. Also, the point of Don Bluth film is basically even at the darkest moment, you will get a happy ending. Okay, so if he's playing into the role of it gets worse before it gets better, that's just general filmmaking. Which is nothing new to blow your skirt off about. And red. These are probably that. All right. This one, this one. Oh my gosh, I was pretty upset when Optimus Prime died. Even though I saw Beast Wars and not the original Transformers series, because I was born in the '90s, and you know that's that's a fair assessment. Um, yeah, uh, I know that's a hilarious comparison, but you know that. Still, my point against Don Bluth's uh, philosophy on that. Uh, but with um, with Five of Goes West, it's just it was just a lot more fun and much more colorful. Um, and having the whole West thing, um, I'm not gonna lie, there are a couple of like insensitive moments, like they had the um, the Indians, which was pretty racist to have. But I don't think they were demonized because they did feed um they did feed Tiger like a lot. Let me just go ahead and uh, take this over here. And then that's the funny thing, you know. I hear that you know there's some movies that have you know racial stereotypes, but some of those racial stereotypes have been helpful in the film. So like in certain movies, depending on which ones there are. So case in point, in Dumbo, they had the crows, and yeah, they were racially insensitive, but they also helped Dumbo, you know, find his spot, you know, find his purpose when he would flap his ears and be able to fly. Like, they all laughed at him and everything, just like everybody else did, until, like, Timothy kind of gave him an earful, and then they decided to help him out. Uh, if I were to find another example, okay, you know what, I'm going to have to, 
Separate some of these. No, not there. I keep finding a lot of the bright pink ones. Put that there. You know, it's three of these. Hang on. Damn it. Although I can't say the same thing for, um, what is it, the uh, the Native Americans in Peter Pan. That one, yeah, they, they, they just went all full stereotype and... Uh, they didn't really have much of a contribution to the main narrative of the film. And how suddenly I remember that one Raggedy Ann and Andy, a.k.a. the film that was just one big acid trip, as everyone refers to it. I kind of avoided that movie because I did not want to get myself traumatized, even in my college years. I just saw that and I'm like, good God, what the fuck is going on in that film? And yet, I had the balls to sit through Cool World, which was one of the most garbage landfill movies I've ever sat through. Like, I don't even blame Ralph Bakshi for that. Paramount fucked up really bad by interfering with the creative liberties to make it marketable. Think goes over here, yeah. Um. <gasps> uh, excuse me. What the fuck even is that? Oh, that's a red one. The ads are done. Man, quite a rude timing. <laughs> yeah. As I was mentioning before about um, about the stereotyping of um, the Native Americans in uh, Peter Pan, what makes the red man red, that was a big yikes. I'm not going to defend that. Nor would I defend uh, the stereotyping of uh, Song of the South. The weird thing is, if it was so racially insensitive, why did the actors agree to it aside from the paycheck? Yeah, let's go for red. Drop it there. Something tells me I'm going to get plastered with a bunch of comments with what I would say about those type of movies. Uh, good question. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's right. We were talking about Raggedy Ann and Andy. And, um, yeah, I kind of skipped that one. And yet, ironically enough, I went and uh, sat through Cool World, which was one of the... It was a garbage movie. Like, aside from how weird the animation was, just the whole movie was 
it, it made absolutely no sense. And I would find out later on that, like, on the surface, I thought it was just a movie trying to be another version of Who Framed Roger Rabbit. Because Who Framed Roger Rabbit had a handful of, like, adult content, including alcohol, smoking, and, you know, all that shit. But then I found out that Ralph Bakshi had a completely different idea on how he was trying to make the film. And it's really the fault of Paramount because they wanted to make the movie more marketable for a wider audience in order to sell the film. Because they're making animation and animation costs a lot of money to make and they feared that the movie wouldn't sell very well or something like that. I don't know. They were being very stupid about it. Like even Kim Basinger, or Kim Basinger, however you pronounce her name, agreed to having the changes made because she wanted her kids to see uh, the movie she was starring in. Still doesn't make up for the fact that the movie has no idea what it's trying to tell. <clears throat> Whoop! Gotcha. Whoop! Don't even try to escape. There. It's really late, so I'm going to sleep. All right. Let's see, that movie is garbage, and this film that I had me dislike for round of action films, including Wizards. This is probably the biggest batch of uh, beats that I've ever sorted. Drop, you son of a bitch. This goes over here. There. Yeah, it is almost late. I'm still going to continue streaming until I'm completely done sorting all of this. Because I'm just like, I'm almost there. You get over here. There's like one more bag, which is this one. Hopefully it won't be as big. And... And now... Yeah, like more than halfway done with this draw. The red one was just the biggest one. The only Ralph, let's see. The animation in it is good. Let's see. The only Ralph version that I would give respect to is the animated version of Lord of the Rings. The animated Lord of the Rings, I could not bear to watch that one because something about the animation just felt very off. Like some of the movements were disjointed and I get they were trying to go for a realistic look, but it just didn't feel right. Like, it left a bad taste in my mouth. I will say it is better than the Hobbit film that Realm, the Rankin Pass made. That was a piece of shit. Um, at least it's not the animated version of The King and I. Why was that movie even made? Like, what was the point of that? Were they trying to, like, bounce off the success of Disney animated movies? Or the animated musicals? Because that was already, like... Because the movie was out in 1999. And by that point, people were already getting tired of the Disney musicals. Or at least the Disney renaissance at that point. Which I think it was just hilarious that they would try doing that, despite how late to the party they were. Here and these two. 
think that's what that is. And whoop. Something tells me I'm going to have to like refill this. Where is uh, That's not the one. Um, holy shit, there's a lot of these. Damn. instead. Damn it! There's that other piece. Alright. Yeah, something tells them I'm going to have to use two of these bags. Jesus, that's a lot of pink. Ugh. I think that when this, uh, when this was made. Okay, it looks like the connection is back. That's the second time that happened. God damn it. All right. Well, I don't know what's in this Papa John's box. That's one of these. Yep, that one goes over here. And some more reds. All right. I guess I'm not going to be able to like get it all done tonight. Chuck the Emperor. Have you heard of a restaurant called Ted's Montana Grill? No, I haven't. Damn it, get up. That goes over here. So does that one. Let's see. why the sorting of perler beads because when i got a thing of perler beads a bunch of colors were just all mixed together for whatever reason like okay so i guess i have to sort them out myself and i wanted to do a stream of it so that way i can interact with you guys while keeping myself busy That was a close one. Let's see. Um, that goes over here. And this also goes over there. Yeah. What else is over here? 
gun before that. I'm just gonna get the last of this. To go here. This goes here. Oh, whoops. And that goes there. Ah, no. You are there. See, and it's working with me trying to be on my best behavior? Was it something I said? This no, come on, get up, get up. This goes over here. It's me personally. Did something happen? Now that my internet is also to set some... Hey, uh, Courtney. Hope you're doing light. Uh, I hope you're doing good at this late hour. I'm finishing up my sorted uh, bead sorting here. Got these colors over here, and uh, yeah. No, wait, that goes over there. No, you get up. Let's just add that it's very melted on multiple panic attacks and I'm starting to find out them. Oh, shit! Well, I hope you're doing okay, um, Courtney. Sorry that you're going through that. If you want, I can uh, bring you into the call. We can, you know, you can have someone to talk to. And I am done? Done with what? I don't understand the point of... Oh, okay. Well, I hope you feel better, Courtney. If my alarm goes off in an hour. All right. That goes there. Oh, you're done with the ads. Okay. That makes sense. You get up. That goes over there. And go ahead and just... And, and there, put you here.
Ah! I'm gonna fall back in here. I'm almost done sorting all this shit out. That's where you go. The spread one here. Oh, wait, these are a darker shade. Man, this is starting to feel stressful on you, no offense. Um. I mean, maybe so, but I'm almost there. I've been meaning to get this done for a very long time. I don't know whose broad idea it was to just like make a bunch of shuffled colors. It's not gonna bother to like organize properly, you know? It's a really dumb idea. No, 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 that goes over there. These bright ones go over here. Close to finishing this one, and I'll be on the last batch of all of these. This goes over here. Two of those, one here. Come on, in you go. Drop, and this one drop. Nope, you over here. slightly darker and this one was slightly darker <gasps> and nope so this goes over here this goes over here Oh, 
Come on, drop. There we go. I was gonna get burp, but I'm not magical star <laughs> Yeah. He always seems to be the one to do that. You get over here. And uh you there. You here. Against the pure red. Let's put this here. Just do that, and It's a dark one. I can go here, as well as these two. It's a pure red one. Uh, let's put you here and here. You're still alive? It's after 8 a.m. where I am having breakfast. Yeah? Apparently sorting out these beads have taken longer than usual. And it's kind of coincidental that you came in the call because Kuba just mentioned you about ranking burps. And that goes there. No, wait, this goes over here. And Yeah, the pink and red ones have taken much longer for me compared to the other ones. There's a lot more bees to sort out. That goes over there. This goes here. These two go over there. Well, I'll have to see for myself when the VOD goes up. Yeah. Had a couple of disconnections. Oops. Yep, it's the right one. And... No, 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 no. Damn it. This one is packed. I'm going to have to find another one of these. 
Uh, actually, let me see if I can find some over here. If not, I'll have to check the closet. So I'm just going to have to leave this in one of the bowls for right now until I can find another one of these things. So I don't know where it went. However, I can find the other ones to empty it in. This is red one. This one. That light pink one. If I could find that somewhere. Oh, so that's where the rest of these went. Okay, well... Mystery uh, Science Theater 3000. I remember that. That was a lot of fun. I've been listening to more riff tracks because, like, they're, like, entirely the movies uh, that they're, you know, talking about. Not being cut off for the sake of commercial breaks. Come on, zip up all the way. There. So many of those. All right. Uh, that's what this one is. Now, where's the white ones? Yes, honey? Just checking on you. There we go. How's things going? I'm on one bag finally. That's great. <sighs> Hi, Chad. You messaged me saying you were organizing Urkels. Yeah. That was a while ago. You okay? Yeah. OBS kept disconnecting on me. I'm sorry. I don't know why it does that. Oh, sometimes the internet's the internet. Are you still having a good time? Yeah. It's hard to tell sometimes. Hi, guys. Come on. Zip up. So what's the process? What do you mean? So like you're filling up these bags, what's like the next thing? Or are you finally done organizing all the perler beads? Oh yeah, now you have to do yellows and oranges? Yep. Is that the last one? Yep. Woo, you're at the home stretch, baby bear. Yep. Ah, damn it. I'll get him. All right, some of them fell out. Come on, stay open. I think it was just only one that fell. Yeah, I'm feeling around it's only one. Nope. You don't want a bubbly? Uh, sure, I could go for a bubbly. Okay, I'll get you a bubbly. Alright, let's go ahead and toss that over there. Those sandwich bags are going to be used for other purposes. Until then. Sandwiches? Sandwich bags. No, I said like sandwiches. Mm, maybe. It was a pretty good series to watch. I remember seeing it when I was young, and I wasn't into it at the time. Um... Yeah, I guess that kind of makes sense. All right, so I'm just sort these out. So these ones. That's the transparent ones. Let's bring that over here. So that way they're easy to tell apart for the shade. Ah! This goes over here. This one goes over here. Thank you. And just put this here for now. Okay. 
Uh, do you have a reminder that you two are domestically cute? Yes, we are. You guys don't see the moment where I tell him he's stinky. And that I'm gonna beat him up. If he doesn't give me his lunch money. Send help! <laughs> <laughs> I'm just charging my wireless headphones for a bit. Okay. I need to walk around to try to make the cramps subside. Love, love the human body. Ten out of ten. Totally reincarnated as another one. Mm. Oh, excuse me, Jesus. Yeah, the bubbly activated something. Yeah, gas. Alright, are these the same color? Get up. Yeah, they're all the same color. This one's just slightly different. That's what makes you too cute. You're not overly lovey-dovey and tease each other. Uh, so love each other. Uh, and are wholesome. Also, we had a five burp and then an eight. They're rating your burps. Uh, oh, magical man. star does that. <laughs> Were you raised in a barn? <laughs> I probably won't get a 10 out of that, but getting a rise out of you was hilarious. Damn it. No. <laughs> 10. Not as big as the one in 2019, but a 10. We are men, we are made for this kind of thing. Now that we're men, we have facial hair. Now that we're men. Uh, oh. <laughs> it's probably a pizza in here. It's cheese sticks. Oh. But you like, I mean, it's basically pizza without the sauce, so. Trying to get that one stick off, and it's I, like... I don't know, like, since getting... The first couple days of being on my period, I just crave the most garbage food, but I also do not have a big appetite, so I can't eat a lot, but I crave a lot. Mm. So I was like, eh, I'll order something that I know you'd like. Mm. Uh, but tomorrow I gotta, I gotta go grocery shopping so we can eat healthier, because I'm feeling sick eating garbage food. It's a, it's a bad cycle, man. Anyways, I'll leave you to it. Alright. Oh, shit. I love cheese sticks dipped in marinara sauce. You know what? Cuba, I have just that. I swear, this is like partial mukbang when doing this. Because earlier I had a whole thing of, um, thing of Panda Express.
I think so. Asking about marinara sauce. Yeah, I think that's... No, Papa John's. Yeah. Whoa. For a second, I thought that was going to fall over. This table is fucking crowded. Damn it. I mean, if the roll fell over, I don't know. Like, the roll wouldn't be gone. Like, the roll would be gone. The, oh, the breadstick would be gone. But the rest of the bowls are, uh, they're fine. I'm going to leave that breadstick dicked in there. It's going to be fucking marinated after I pull it out. I like Papa John's. They had good pizza. Also, I like Little Caesars. They had some good crazy bread and cheese bread. And now, I want Little Caesars, but it's 3.35 a.m. where I'm at. No, no. Come on. Oh, wait, this is a... Uh, call me weird, but I like Pizza Hut. It's good here in the UK. I also enjoy Pizza Hut. The thing I used to like were their... Um, they had their own calzones, but now they uh, like they canceled it, and now we have... Um, there's a different name for them. They call I think they call them wraps. They're not as good. It's a little too uh, overbearing on the cheese. One, two, three, four. Yeah, it's five assortments here. Solid yellow, transparent yellow, this, and this. Come on, drop. Oh. Yeah, that can go there. And, uh, yep. I did try pizza when I was young. It was good. But now that I'm older, I tried again. It was good. But the thing is, is that when I eat Pizza Hut, my stomach is starting to not feel good. Yeah. I hate getting older. Join the fucking club. That's absolute donkey balls to age. In a few more years, I'm going to be 40. I'm not looking forward to that. Still looking for the water of youth? Yes, the fountain of youth.
Let's see, I think, no, this goes over here, and yeah, I think that's what all that is. Okay, um, let's find another cheese stick to keep things occupied. Not a big fan of the edge uh, pieces, so I'll just leave this. Oh, excuse me. Yep, let's put that there. See through, regular. Oh, oh, oh. Five, that was a five. Damn it! That goes right here. That goes over here. Okay. Solid yellows. There, um, I guess that's this one. Yeah, that's what these ones are. Are these the same thing? No. Wait, are they? No, these are different. That goes there. Solids. Oh, God, God damn it. All right. I got found a green bead. I'll just let that sit there. But I know there was a yellow bead somewhere. Oh, I found a pink one here. And it fell out of my grip. Ah. <sighs> a piece of hair let's get that off this orange piece goes there and these are just two other beads I'll have to find a place for And no one was hurt in the process. Yep. This up and put them on the side somewhere.
Damn it. Get over here. So what was your favorite part about being a Babs? A particular panel you enjoyed? Being a, a friend you haven't seen in a while? Just like being in San Fran? Um, I still have yet to... Um, I've been thinking about making a video explaining my experience. Um... Because I've had, a, like, various emotions going on. Like, I haven't been to the... Like, I haven't been to BabsCon in nine years. And, in general, I haven't been to a pony convention in about five years. Like, not since the last BronyCon in 2019. Um, most of the uh, time at the con was uh, vendoring. So that Chrissy can do her part as one of the mascots. Because she works as a mascot at the con. And um, it gave me a lot of experience when it came to how to work with a vendor, which at some point I was planning on making some uh, personal products and not just, you know, making, you know, YouTube content. Like it, at some point as a content creator, I would have to learn that. Um, and I'm not going to lie. It was very nerve wracking at first, but I got the hang of it and I was able to be a lot more successful. Uh, made a lot of friends. Found some people who recognized me and admired the work while looking at the stuff that I had. Uh, I had a couple of autographs to sign. And, uh, you know, they were just really happy to see me. And I was happy for them to, you know, actually get to see me. It was actually a kid who came over and he uh, brought a guitar and I uh, signed his... Um, he wanted me to sign his pick guard. He admired the music that I made. Uh, no, I didn't deal with any Karens. None whatsoever, thank God. That mostly happens at, like, grocery stores. They're always entitled to every goddamn thing in the world. But, no, none of that was there. The atmosphere was absolutely joyful, even despite me being a nerve wreck. Um... I don't think I've ever stumbled... I don't think anybody has stumbled upon a Karen at a pony convention. I think that would be kind of silly. But then again, I could be wrong. I don't know why somebody would act up in such a manner during a con. Unless, you know, they're not getting their sun pie to notice them. Which, you know, if you're going to be that obsessive, you shouldn't be at a pony convention. Or just a general convention. Separate fiction from reality, you know? Alright, let's see. Uh... Bam, bam, bam. Uh, at least it wasn't a Susan, you know. I still haven't seen a Hasbro Hotel yet, so. I would have to uh, understand that. I, like, I imagine the context would be very unpleasant. Some little some kid who was a fan of Owl House, and we kind of had a chat, like, chat on how much of a piece of shit David Saslav is, and that Disney was absolute dog shit to Owl House, and we just got that off our chest. And I think he recognized my stuff, too. But, uh, yeah. Oh, I think this is part of this, and... Oh, that goes over there. Solid yellow. There's two of them. That's a transparent yellow. And... Oh, excuse me. I'm guessing that was a five. According to what Magical Star would rate it. And that's just a wild guess. Whoop! That one dropped. I think I fell into that instead of off the desk. <gasps> Uh, uh. I'm guessing that would be a nine. Uh, did you ever get to watch some Owl House? I watched the first few episodes and then I just lost track with other stuff to work on. Um, like I'm sure, like I've already watched the like watched the first like episode and I had a couple of laughs according to uh, the main character's imagination. Okay, so it was a seven. All right.
And the long one was a 9.5. <laughs> now you're starting to troll me. It's kind of like um, one of those um, Source Filmmaker videos, but instead of ponies, it was uh, Legend of Zelda. And uh, Link was trying to get a um, was trying to get a new um, what should we call it a new shield. And every time he was at the pawn shop and he showed a lot of his rings, uh, not his rings, his rupees, and the pawn shop guy goes, mm, mm, and like shaking his head horizontally, implying no. And every time he finds more rupees, more rupees, nope. That's not enough. So you know I'm fair. Beating that giant one back in 2019 was hard. That's what happens when you set your own high bar. Um, are you talking about the one back at a time spinner? Because that was in 2020 when I was competing against Vlad. Like, even Vlad, like, uh, stepped down. He's like, dude, I will hand the crown to Golden. <laughs> Unless there's something else that I'm missing here. There are times I forget even my own shit. So. There's that that I have to be mindful of. That's a solid. Vlad had given up his own crown to go. Fuck. Yeah, that was during the uh, time spinner one. That was in 2020. And this is here. This is here. Ah, nope, 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 nope. That goes over here. I still remember Vlad's word of wisdom in Yoshi's Island. Um, no, I remember Time Spinner was in 2020. You get fucked up on Jin and you do the actual work, yeah. Vlad made a lot of references. God, do I miss having him around. Oh shit, that's a that's a see-through one. And that's also a see-through one. so close to being done. It's ridiculous. I can almost taste the victory. Yeah, I don't know who thought it was a bright idea to just, like, shuffle a crap ton of, like, different colors of, uh, like, different bead colors into one. Like, that's so unorganized. It's ridiculous. Uh, uh, uh. And I think that's this one.
I think this one is... No. That goes over here. <sighs> this is done by the same people who made Perler Beads. Yeah, exactly. I don't know why they scatter the colors everywhere. It's ridiculous. Obviously, complain it's not going to do anything about it. It's not going to help make things better. Oh my god, it was 2020. I didn't know why I had have since it was four to five years ago. Kind of a yeah. Life will do that to you. Wait, is this a different color? Yeah, that kind of is. There. Oh, it's another one of these. Um and What was what? Oh, there's another one of these. I'm just double checking. There. I see a solid one in there. Sounded like pots and pans are being knocked over. I didn't hear that. Then again, I'm not wearing headphones. Tiny little bit left. Orange and I think it was one of those uh, sound bits that somebody played. I could be wrong. Damn it! That fell over. Yeah, these are slightly different. Oh, there's another one of these. So there's one, two, three, four, five. No, wait. Two, four. Okay, so yeah, this is five being separated. Oh, sounded like it was coming from the other room. Okay, I misread that. My apologies. Come on. And... Man, 
is getting really tired, but I'm almost there. Oh, that's a see-through. Damn it. No, that doesn't go there. Too excited. And hang on, is that a solid? Yeah, it is. And solid. Solid. This goes here. And this goes here. <sighs> We're approaching the end. Sounds of victory are playing in my head. Come on. Come on. Look at you in there too. Checking to make sure. Yep. Okay, I think that's what you heard. <coughs> see through. See through. If I can drop in there. Drop that. And, uh. You found solid. Now you need is a liquid and a. A liquid and gas? I'm not understanding the reference. Look at that tiny little bit of a bowl there. Whoops, sorry. That's what the rest of those are. And Whoa! Nope, 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 no, you don't. Ah, wait. That's Maybe not just pull all that out. <laughs> if you took science class, you know it. I didn't do so well in science. Actually, I uh, developed a personal grudge with the teacher I once had uh, back in my high school years. It was the first time that I actually had a D for a final grade. And somehow it was my fault in the end of the day because I'm the student. But the teacher did a lousy job being a teacher. I always hated that rule. Alright. I mean, I don't mind learning science. It's just the execution of the school system was garbage. And that's most of the educational system. I've learned over the years that the educational system is very corruptive. These two, 
over there. Orange, 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 and orange. That's a solid, a solid, yep. Liquid, uh, solid turns to liquid, and liquid turns to gas. Example, ice is solid, but when ice is left out for long, it melts into water, and uh, which is liquid. And then afterwards, it dries out into air. Also, liquid does turn back solid. Well, that's if it's cold enough. Whoop! I see you. Let's go ahead and pour you in here. Solid yellow. Let's see what we got. Two oranges. An apricot. I think that's what the name of that color is. Alright. Oh, wait, 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 wait. This goes... No, not there. I don't know why I moved it there. I haven't noticed. Ugh. There's definitely going to be some more gas now. God damn it. another one of those actually is this a yeah so right. gotcha solid solid let's see and Now, to back all this up, let's see, this one for that, um, there's the rest of them, now what color for this one, I'll have to dig through, I mean I kind of have to do that regardless, because there's a few other ones that are left over. Alright. Okay. Found a spot for that one. Let's go ahead and fill it up. sticking out more. Is this the right color? Yes, it is. Yeah, this is a solid green. Ah, ah, ah. There you go. In you go. Excellent. Alright. And not that one. It's somewhat of a pinkish color. This one, yes, it is. Excellent. Oh wait, this is a brighter pink. Let's get you out. I made a misjudgment there. Alright, come on. There we 
there? Is that bright pink? Yeah, that's where it goes. All right, let's pour the rest of these in here. And... Huh, seems there aren't that many uh, oranges for some reason, but okay. This is the yellow. And finally, the see through yellow. That's it. All my perler beads are sorted. I don't ever want to do this again. The next time I got to get myself some perler beads, I'm just going to find ones that are like already assorted. Good God, this was a pain in the ass. Oh. I mean, we are the champions. This like can still be played regardless. Whew. Am I able to put all of this in here with all the bags? Doesn't look like it. Yeah, look at that. It's already overfilling. <laughs> well, I'll find a place for all of these. I'm guessing that's just another assortment of the same type of uh, purple ones. But, uh... Yep. All right, well, thank you for your, anybody who stuck around. I will actually get started on making something out of these perler beads. I've just got to find a place for all these. Uh, maybe like a Tupperware or something for all of this. And I'll probably have a better assortment in the future. But now that all this is sorted out, I could finally get, you know, yeah, I could get a bigger container. But um, thank you for sticking around. This one was a lot longer than usual. I'm going to have to, like, go through a couple little edits when it's up on YouTube. But, uh... Until then, I'll catch you guys on the later half, and uh, you have a good rest of your night, or you have a good rest of your morning. Until then, I'll catch you all later.